I'm not sure if we're live. Are we live, guys? Can you guys hear us? If so, give us a mic check before we get started. We're running a little bit of a new system <coughs> here, so give us a mic check if you hear us. Enter a number one if you can hear us. Enter a two if you can't. And let us know if it's choppy. Like I said, we're running a little bit of a newer system today. Excellent, excellent. So how's everybody doing? Welcome to the live, Toilet Time TV Live. Welcome back, Rotten Soul. Yeah, uh, good to hear you're doing well. Yeah, you said you got stabbed, I saw, in one of the comments. Uh, do tell what happened. Of course, as long as you're comfortable. Uh, welcome back, Jam Jackpa, uh, King James, and... Jeremy Boy 47 yeah. new guy. And, well, I don't know if you're new uh, or I, not, but I haven't seen him before. Familiar. Are you sure? I've, uh, that seems familiar. Yeah, work does suck. And hopefully this does make the time pass. Because this too shall pass. <laughs> yeah, this too is for time. Well, you guys have any questions? I am just sending out some more live verification and invitations before we get started. Get some more people to chime in. But throw your questions in there. Um, yeah, I guess while we're waiting for your guys' questions and anything you guys want to talk about, literally anything, um, <clears throat> I'll just start reading off from the top. So Rotten Soul says, I'm here and happy to be here. Hello, Alice and Eagle Eye and everyone else. Hope you're all doing well. And I wish you all the best of luck for the future. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jam Jackpa says, watching via mobile phone, let's flush the toilet. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, Ron Soul says, share the live stream on your social media. You know, I, That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the statement of the year. Jam Jackpa says, calling from the swamps. LOL. Toilet Time says, going live in two <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're a little bit late there, but now we're here. It's okay. We're delayed. King oh. James says, what up? What up, fellas? What up? Uh, Ron Soul says, can't wait. It's fire. King James grabs popcorn. Jam Jackpuss says, that's crazy. I get phone signal from the swamps. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. Or are you at Louisiana? I don't remember. Where are you at? Uh, Jam ja uh, King James says, ha ha. Ron Soul says, see, with a smiley face. Jam Jackpuss says, but here, there is a noise between the signal. But that's okay. Uh, but that's, but that's, look with me. I think it means okay with me. Yeah, how does it sound? We're run, running a little yeah. bit of a newer system. Everybody's saying it's one. Yeah, how about the uh, choppiness? Is it choppy on your guys' side, or is the video stream pretty good? Yeah, if it's good, type A1. Yeah, I'm just sending out some more requests out there, so throw your questions on in. Yeah, you're all invited to our pizza party again. We're sending out those requests, too, while I'm speaking. <laughs> Our pizzas are a lot better than Jennifer Aniston's and Adam Sandler's combined. We actually get pizzas that are out to our own parts. And Jennifer Aniston doesn't. She only gets pizzas that are after her own heart. Mm. Jen Jackpa says, by the way, the Bible narrative you gave a few days ago was great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if you guys disagreed with anything, let me know. If you want to inform me of anything, let me know. I'm here to learn. Uh, Rotten Soul says, I was walking home and got stabbed in the neck and head and hand multiple times from behind. Wow. That's, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's, uh, yeah. It must have been one of those things where somebody's trying to get back at somebody and you fit a description Unless, of course, you were a part of some kind of gang violence and now they're getting back at you. I hope 
it's the former and not the latter but either way uh i wish we could help you honestly that that sucks yeah i'm just sending out some more requests guys before we get started <clears throat> so throw those questions in is there anything else on the question list uh jerumbo says jerembo says it's jerembo not jeremboy okay jerembo okay. Ron Soul says, I don't know who or why they did it. Wow, you didn't even get to look at them. Huh? That sucks even more. Um, Kez official FTS waves with a purple hand. Jerumbo says, it's decent, referring to the sound. Ron Soul says, very clean video, not choppy. Jerumbo says, have you guys ever looked into the Terra Infinite map? Hey, you talking about the Flat Earth map that has the... Lord of the Rings, like it has multiple rings, and then uh, there's extra land outside of the ice wall or the rings. I just think it's like the like Lord of the Rings. It's like you have center Earth, middle Earth, and then outer Earth. <laughs> and every time you go outside of a wall, there's more land. And, yeah. yeah, he clarifies the the land beyond the ice walls. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've definitely looked into that. I don't know how to prove that because outside of these walls, apparently there is different creatures or species or some kind of different life form, and there's a boundary between those who have tried to dominate and not dominate, and there's a battle between these two different types of species, and there's a certain time or year when I guess the boundary to break through the ice walls or this dome or firmament or the layer and <clears throat> that time when it's weak, there's ability to transport between this firmament where you can get between the two outside layers and these two sets of creatures, there's a good one and a bad one. And I don't know, there's a whole bunch of layers to that. So I don't know how we can prove that, but I know that's where some people try to utilize the reptilian concepts and the people who live outside the ice walls in these different earths or planets or regions or land areas they may be reptilians or people like that that are trying to use the earth as a energy source or a propagational source or energy source but <clears throat> yeah well, i've heard about it there are other accounts though like was it admiral bird who flew into the center of the earth yeah the hollow earth <laughs> yeah but you have to pick your poison, really, because obviously the hollow earth doesn't jive with the flat earth. Uh, so there, you have accounts from people going beyond the ice walls and encountering that it is a globe. It's just a hollow globe. And then you have people going beyond the ice walls and in, they're actually beyond it or they see beyond it and there's actually more land out there. Or like you said, the projection on the moon, uh, which that causes some questions too. like... <clears throat> um, and maybe someone talked about this. I haven't uh, kept up with the moon projection theory, but what do what do people say the moon is made out of to be able to project a clear image like this? Like assuming that the moon is just a projection of Earth itself, which that could be possible. Um, what is the moon made of that projects an image like that? Uh, it would be interesting to know. And of course, you'd have to believe the moon is flat, so it can project a flat image of the flat earth uh, now one thing that's interesting though about believing there's land beyond the ice walls is we literally could be in this uh jim carrey what's it called the truman show dome we could literally be in a dome just like the truman show and uh everyone outside of the uh this dome is maybe all the elites all the elon musks or whoever or maybe it's aliens or reptilians or whoever is out there. They're watching us, and they're out there is real freedom, but in here we're all in this dome, and we're basically the experiments and all that. So it's a, f a lot of fun thoughts. And, yeah, we can't really disprove or prove it by experiential evidence because none of they're not going to let any of us board a rocket ship. And the moment that they let somebody board a rocket ship and test it, and that person came back and told all of us, Hey guys, there's more land. You know, we're gonna assume that they were either bought off or, you know, uh, 
Well, either way, it doesn't matter. Whether they said it was fake or real, we wouldn't believe their report because we would want to see it ourselves. So the cycle continues. But Well, the question is, is how do you verify if there is something, some creature that exists outside of our plane? How do you know? Like, is it because it's... <clears throat> like, some people try to elude facts like they're spiritual beings, so then there's a... They're beyond our dimensional realm. It's another dimension. Assuming that all these planes aren't dimensions, they're actual planes just within our dimension, they're just restricted by a barrier. Let's say that barrier is the firmament. <clears throat> and if there's a way to go through the ice wall or the firmament, and you can go outside this plane, or things can get inside this plane, they're all within the same dimension. So they wouldn't be spiritual creatures or some deity or being that's outside of our dimension. They're in our same dimensional world. They're just blocked. How would you know if that is another dimensional creature? Because usually when you correlate stuff like shapeshifters or anything like that, that's a multi-dimensional facet. Like maybe they can do those things because they have multiple dimensional aspects or characteristics or abilities or something. It was that <laughs> woman that was Yeah, I know. I talking, about, talking about the snake on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I guess that's the question. How would you know if you're dealing with a creature that's on another plane? You can't. Well, I, I mean, maybe somebody in the chat knows. I, I'm just asking, how would you know that? Well, even if you do know, how would you prove it to us and everybody else on the chat? Or the whole world, for that matter. Oh, how that, would you prove that to anybody and make them believe you? That's what I'm asking. Maybe they yeah. know. I'm, I'm open to hearing. Because yeah. I'm familiar with the concept. I just, I, I'd like to know what you guys think. Is that possible? Is that something you guys believe? Rotten Soul says, I'm not a gang member or a criminal. I think it was just random. That sucks, man. Uh, I wish you the best. Hope you get better. Uh, if I knew your location, don't drop your location. But if I did, I'd probably send you a card along with my regards. Um, yeah, some chocolates and all that. Uh, that's not a fun time to spend in the hospital. Hopefully we can make your journey through this chapter of your life a little bit more pleasant, though. Uh yeah, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Rotten Soul has been with us, I think, since the beginning, supporting every video. So, <clears throat> uh, Rotten, Spool, Rotten, Rotten Soul is very special to us. Uh, Dan Garcia, the dynamic duo, glad to see you live again, going to share stream. This Excellent, I'm sharing the stream too. <laughs> <laughs> you two are invited to our pizza party. Uh, this Scopex Chemtrail now Chemtrail project is wild. Bill Gates is a partner with this one. Yeah, he there was this whole thing a couple, I think a couple weeks ago, um, where in Texas and a couple other states, the Gates Foundation produced these genetically modified mosquitoes. And they inoculated them with, I think, the malaria vaccine. And the objective was to prevent malaria. Well, America hasn't had a malaria outbreak or incident, I think, in like 20 years. But after these mosquitoes were released, and I think there was like a couple million of them, there was all of a sudden like 10 to 12 cases of malaria. And so I was like, yeah, here's an ingenious thing again, back to the Gates Foundation. There is no problem. We don't have any incidents. So let's create a problem so then we can create a solution so we can force people to be under the guise or the thumb of the globalists again. So, yeah, I, I definitely don't. I'm not surprised about anything that's in collusion with uh, the Gates Foundation. Yeah, scope. PEX specifically is uh, stands for Stratospheric Controlled Perturbation Experiment. So uh, it's interesting. I was just reading about this. Like uh, literally right now. Yeah, like right now, <laughs> just now. <laughs> While I'm speaking, I'm reading about it. I didn't hear about that. So it's interesting. It's uh, I guess it's a group at Harvard. 
Uh, Skillpacks is a scientific experiment to advance understanding of stratospheric aerosols that could be relevant to solo, solar geoengineering. It claims to improve the fidelity of simulations, computer models, of solar ge engine, geoengineering by provi providing modulars with experimental results vital to addressing specific science questions. I wonder if that has anything to do with that. You know, about 10 years ago, it was a big conspiracy back then, which when I say conspiracy, I don't mean it's false. It's just conglomerates conspiring to dominate. That Monsanto's was going to <laughs> try to buy the sun or own the sun so they could regulate sun usage. But, you know, these chemtrails are a way to do that. If you propagate these chem chel, chem, these chem chip, chem trails at enough thickness, you can propagate a limitation of solar energy. And so think about it. If everybody goes off the grid and they start living on solar energy and the government wants to force you to pay for energy, even though you bought solar panels, they could start sending these chemtrails through drones, not through people, just drones over areas where there's a lot of people who are living off grid or whatever. And then if you pay the government or a company or whoever a, a fee, they'll make sure there's no chemtrails there and you'll be able to get all the solar energy. But if you don't pay the fee, there's going to always be this layer of sun restriction so you won't be able to fully access the potential of your solar panels, even though you, this is supposed to be free, free energy, or at least, you know, you pay for the system, the infrastructure. So there's a way for them to even prevent solar panel energy by using chemtrails, by restricting the amount of sunlight that a certain area or region can have. And unless you pay a fee, we can block the sun. So I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if something like this was correlated with an idea to monetize the sun usage mm. utilizing chemtrails. And that would suck if, you know, one day you wanted to go out to the beach, but because you intimidated somebody, you know, Amazon canceled your use of the sun. So they said, you know what? We're not going to let you use the sun today. We're going to put you in timeout for like five hours or whatever. And that would suck. Because I'm still going to shop through Amazon. No, nah, I wouldn't be surprised, though. No, I wouldn't be surprised either. I mean. Well, I just, you know, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I'm sure these think tanks who, that's all they do all day is try to figure a way to monopolize the societies. I'm sure there's already in the pipeline some kind of in infrastructure to monetize the idea of free access to the sun. Because everybody's getting solar panels. Everybody's trying to stop getting ripped off by the energy companies and so as individuals start getting independent that's just less money for the corporations so they only have two choices with solar panels either make the solar panel infrastructure more expensive like the panels the inverters all that stuff make that in, so the components make those expensive more expensive or you have to block the resource if you don't do either everybody eventually could just say we don't need it we can live off the grid so at some point, they're going to do one of the two. They're either going to say, oh, the chip demand so high that these inverters now have to be, you know, $50,000 because the chips and the semiconductors are too expensive. Or, you know, they're going to put a battery tax because you need all these batteries to hold this or some kind of capacitation system. And that's going to now you're going to have a tax on that. Like a flux capacitor. No, just a capacitor. <laughs> uh, Look, does it capacitate fluxes? You're talking about like solder flux? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so they got to do one of the two. Either they're going to make the components more expensive, which I doubt they're going to do because that's going to that's going to overlay multiple industries because so many people use these same components. So I, I don't think they're going to make the components more expensive. So the only thing left is to block the source itself, which they easily can do with chemtrails. And if you pay them a fine, it'll just be a sunny day. <laughs> yeah, I, I did hear from Joe Rogan that uh, I guess scientists are uh, developing a way to uh, spread reflective particles all throughout our atmosphere 
to reflect a lot of the sun's harmful rays out of off the earth before it can even so like little tiny mirror pieces basically that well, a lot of people don't know that these chemtrails a lot of it's just aluminum all i think is aluminum dioxide and aluminum is reflective and if you have a bunch of these particles like glitter and they're going to be yeah. and every light is a photon and it has to hit something so if it hits these aluminum particles it's going to deflect the light and so yeah you can maybe put it under the guise of climate control we're doing this to prevent climate control whatever but really it's just going to be a way for them to build an infrastructure to say if you want a nice sunny day so your solar panels can get charged you can pay us this fee this subscription to the sun <laughs> you're gonna have to subscribe to the sun yeah that'd be kind of cool no it's not cool <laughs> <laughs> actually it'd be hot uh, no that that's not anything i want and participate in my life well <clears throat> Moving on. Rotten Soul says, I just take photos of graffiti for my Instagram by the same name and profile photo. Okay. So your profile photo is a graffiti picture. That's cool. And if you guys take a second, hit that like button as we have more people starting to chime on in. You guys hit that like button. It'll get the stream propagated to more people. Also throw those questions on in if you guys have any other questions. I do have some things that I have lined up to talk about, but... We will take all your guys' questions first. Yeah. Ron Soul also says, uh, I'm probably going to start tagging your Instagram video in videos you might find interesting. Yeah, that would be cool. You could also put them in the Discord. And uh, Yeah, if you guys have any videos that you think would be interesting for us to watch or any topics or anything, always put them in the Discord. Let me go ahead and post a Discord in the chat. Uh, Noah Cloud says, what's good? <laughs> Hello, Noah Cloud. How you doing, Mr. Cloud? I didn't know if you were going to show up today. I didn't see you in the beginning. But uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Jerembo says flat planes, not planets. So the uh, moon yeah, is a flat. I, I, yeah, I, we, I, I meant figured to say, that. I meant to say planes. but Yeah. Uh, let's see. Jerembo says the Simpsons never lied. I don't know about never, but they're, <laughs> Ever? yeah, but they're, pretty, uh, they're pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little yellow people jerembo says i'm telling ya it's right in our faces yeah that's it's true that's the truth ron soul says i will shut up now because i just love hearing your logic that sounds kind of cynical but i'm going to take it as not cynical until otherwise classified jerembo says what about nasa and werner von braun dmt Oh yeah, we uh, I think we talked about that one time, the Werner von Braun tombstone that has a psalm or a proverb on it. I can't remember which one. I think it's in the Psalms says the heavens with the firmament. Yeah, that God spread the firmament. I yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm not a I look. <laughs> I believe in I do believe that they are legitimate collusions because it's money and power. So but to isolate things to a specific thing, I don't know, that's difficult. To say that NASA isn't involved in some form of societal control, that's silly. Of course they are. But at what level and what magnitude, I th you know, at some point, people have to think, are you giving people more credit than what it is? And... And you have to think about how does this kind of a conspiracy manifest without being exposed? You know, as l when it's just exponential numbers. As numbers get bigger, the exposure rate naturally is going to get more probable. So, example, let's say you're selling something illicit, you know, something illegal. If you sell a bunch of the thing, if you sell it a bunch of times, the chances of you getting caught is a lot more because you're continually selling things. But if you sell it one time or two times then the chances of getting caught is very small. It's like robbing a bank, they say statistically. If you rob a bank once, you probably never get caught. But, of course, like the exponential numbers, the more you rob a bank, the more chances you're going to get caught. So it's the same thing with conspiracies. The larger the numbers of people who participate in a conspiracy to keep it quiet, the higher chances it's unlikely that it's a real conspiracy if it stays quiet because there's more people to just open their mouth. And we're not talking one or two, but let's say there's like 
500,000 people. Let's say there's 10,000 people. Out of that, the ratio of even 10% is 1,000 people. 1% is 100 people. But yet we only hear like a few people talk. And we can't say everybody's getting swatted. So the problem becomes how many people know about a conspiracy and how many and what's the chances that they're all going to stay quiet and and uh, anybody can argue like what would be the reasons behind them staying quiet or they threatened or their lies but this would be everybody so if there's 10,000 people every of the, every one of those 10,000 people will be under threat of whatever you're going to say so well maybe they're not getting swatted but maybe they're just getting shadow banned like cuz we know you know America controls the American media and China controls the Chinese media. So if they're all in on it, if the world governments are in on it, like you see at the, uh, what's that plaque for the world, the, the, that world map that you can find in, uh, you're talking about the United Nations. Yeah. United Nations, that map, it's a flat earth map. Apparently, they're all in on it, and that's cool. And they, they could literally just be shadow banning or, you know, canceling videos. Maybe there are, have been millions of people that come forward, but they either get schwacked or, you know, just shadow banned. So you'll never see their videos. Even if you go on Google people, I mean, you're going to see like a million different. It's going to say, you, uh, you know, five million websites matched your search result, but we're only going to show you 10 of those. And they're only going to show you the ones they want you to see. So, and Google, you know, <laughs> Google Earth, they're going to tell you what they want you to know. Well, this is why when you guys listen to me, I talk a lot about how money works. Because you can lie about a lot of things. You can't lie about the money. And monies are connected to some identification. And at some point when identifications have sets or categories, and then those categories tend to be just subsidies or subcategories, then you start to see, oh, well, you can't follow the money. You know, the old adage, follow the money. At some point, the money, you can come up with the craziest cockamamie stories on this planet. But the money is going to tell you who's in business and who's working with these ideas. So at some point, that's why I, was like, I can't prove a lot of things, but I can say there's definitely a correlation between money and contributors. And those who contribute to certain subsidies or organizations... There's some kind of correlation between it all. And the bigger it gets and more people cooperate on one central theme, then you have more probability saying, yeah, that, there's something there. There's something very legit because you have a lot of people participating in an idea. And you already know it's hard to get two people to agree on anything. So if you could get mass groups to all contribute into one ideology, there's something going on. So I this, is, this is why I use logic. Because I will, I will never, they will never let me on a rocket ship to go to the moon. They're never going to do that. And again, even if they did, and I went out there and I saw that the earth is a globe or it's hollow or it's flat or whatever, and I came back and told everybody, nobody's going to believe me. They're going to say he was paid off or whatever. Or he's scared for his life or whatever. He's a puppet now of the masterminds. So there's no way. But for me to believe... And I, I, I'm never, they're, gonna, they're, they're never going to let me on a rocket ship. So the best I can do is use my sixth sense and weigh it based on logical tenability. Does it make sense? Now, it just so happens that there's a lot of flaws in flat earth ideology. Like there's a lot of flat earthers who go out to prove their case and end up debunking themselves. And I don't know what to do that with that information. They don't even know what to do with that information. Um, and we're talking people doing things on sea level that appear to prove the globe earth uh, and then there's th there's people buying a twenty thousand dollar gyroscope that actually tilts point fifteen degrees according to how the earth would actually be rotating so flat earthers buy a twenty thousand dollar gyroscope the most accurate gyroscope and it actually tilts accordingly as if we were on a a, a globe earth they have there's things that they have to work through. I don't maybe that now it doesn't debunk that we're on a flat earth. We could be a flat disc that's rotating. So I mean there's there's always ways around it, but somebody's got to make it make sense for me. There's also flaws in the globe earth thinking. There's a lot of contradictions with that. There's contradictions with the hollow earth. So until someone makes one of these ideas make sense for me, I'm not going to agree with any of them. I'm just out, you know, I'm on the outside viewing 
trying to figure out which one it makes the most logical sense so I can weigh it with my logical tenability. And again, I'm not the most logical person on the planet, but uh, you know, if you can if you can teach a monkey how to you know spell, then surely you can teach me how to do that simple thing. If you can explain it to me, then you can explain it to anybody. What else we got? <coughs> uh, let's see. Jim Jackpot says, "I think dimension is respectively, respectively, from a different view." Yeah, but there's also different characteristics, like physiological characteristics if i'm in a higher dimension time may actually be a travelable perspective let's let's say instead of time just being isolated to an existence or a slice in a moment like in our world time may actually be able to be flipped through like a book in a higher dimension instead of an isolated slice that you live and then you go to another slice that's how our reality works but let's say in the fifth or sixth or tenth dimension you could actually just open a like we open a book maybe in the tenth dimension you can open time like a book and just look at time so it's not just perspective per se like i see uh, a table and now we're going to say based on this viewpoint the table is subjective there could be an objective truth in a higher dimension because the way the reality or the way actuality works in a higher dimension may actually be actual phenomenons like time. It may be partitionable and then you may be able to interact with time. And that's just an assumption, but that's what I'd say. I, I think it's more than just perception. It becomes playable, like you can mold it, you can do something with it. Like, I see a box, but I can't see inside of a box because it has a lid. But in the fifth dimension, maybe I can see inside of the box because I see high, more, more angles than just a restrictive view in my fourth dimension. So I think it's actually playable. Like, you could do something in higher dimensions, not just it's a different perspective. At least that, that's my understanding of it. But, you know, it's hypothetical. We, we don't know. Nobody's really... We haven't had, nobody's ever had access to higher dimensions and then we all can join with you and all go on the choo-choo train to a higher dimension and play in there. Actually, uh, so that's where you're wrong. Am I? Alex Jones actually. Oh yeah, I forgot. He went to the end of the universe. Yeah, he went to the end of eternity. Yeah. And th he did this, I think when he was five. Was he three or five? I can't I remember. I Either way, he it's was remarkable. On, he was on uh, Joe Rogan saying that. Yeah. yeah. You know, most people when they're you know three to five years old, they're designing you know quantum mechanic models and stuff. But not Alex Jones. He went to the edges of eternity. And he he came back and he tells us about it. So I don't know. That's. Well, he's their own. It's fine, but it's like I can't participate. Like whatever he experienced, it's isolated. And when experience is isolated, I'm not going to deny the experience. Like I'm going to say, okay, you had an experience, and I, I whatever you say, I'm going to give it to you. But I can't say it's an objective truth because I can't participate. If I can willingly participate in your weird experience, then I'm going to say this is objective. More than one isolated mind. So you're saying you don't believe him? Well, it, it breaks the Descartian quandary. The Descartian quandary is I know me and I know what I'm thinking, but I, it's the problem of the minds. I can't know you. I can see you, but I don't know if your mind is real. There's no way to prove that. But if we can have multiple facets of multiple dimensional experiences, well, it kind of fixes the Descartian quandary. So. I don't know. I, I think anybody who hears Alex Jones talk, they can tell he's been to eternity well, and back. Like maybe, you can hear it in his voice. Maybe he has. I'm just saying it can't be objective because I can't go to the end of eternity. Like it actually hurt his vocal cords. Yeah. Because he went so fast. Yeah, that's cool. Like he was like he was swift. Shout out to Taylor. Yeah, he he he's a better man than me. I can't do yeah, that. Yeah, he is. <laughs> that that voice, that raspy, like for the next four hours. Yeah, he's a better man than most. Uh, that's that's tough. But you know, he he he, he has a gay frog in his throat. He had a he's he's talked about a lot of things that was spot on <laughs> way before other people. So I'll give him that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Ron Soul says there was an old Disney movie about wars using chemtrails. 
That's interesting. I want to know about a it. A Disney movie? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, look out for next week. I, I really put out my collusional thought on what's going on with all these strikes and Disney and Apple and AI and the real collusion behind this premeditation that it may have been a global premeditation, a gro- global globalist Bilderberg premeditation. And I talk about it in next week's episode, so be on the lookout for next week. Mm. It's yummy. Uh, Foxy says uh, she's sorry to Rotten Soul that that happened. Uh, so, yes, if you guys don't know what happened, you can scroll up or rewind. We talk about it briefly to Ron Soul. If you guys can send him your regards, uh, I'm sure he would appreciate that. Uh, Ron Soul says, definitely not cynical, but the way you talk about topics is awesome. I'm too quick to jump to conclusions, but you guys look at it logically and from different perspectives. Oh, thank you. Well, sometimes I don't know if I even believe what I'm saying. I just know that (laughs) it's an available perspective and I should be open to it. I I actually, I'm going to be honest. A lot of times the things I talk about, I don't believe what I'm saying, but that doesn't mean it's not logically tenable. And if it's logically tenable, then I will entertain it. I will entertain it. Now, once it becomes so far to the end, it's got to be pretty extreme. Like closing. It's got to be wild (laughs) for me. If I ever say no, no, then you already know. You you need a double, triple check because I will entertain almost anything, but that doesn't mean I believe it. But, hey, it's fair game. We should talk about it. <laughs> unless it's close hangers. Yeah, unless it's close hangers. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not about that life. That's an inside thing. If you guys want to know, let us know. <laughs> uh, uh, Dan Garcia says, A majority of NASA are believers in the religion Urantia. Urantia. A friend who works in Texas told me, I think this is why they are so much, so hush hush about certain findings in their exploration, Mars especially. It's interesting. I've never heard of Urantia. What is that? What Probably a that? moon somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it almost sounds like Atlanta, yeah. right? but it's Urantia. And you know, it's one of those things. It's, you know, like somebody was, I think it is, uh, what, it was, what was that guy's name? Oh, wait a second. Oh, no. Jerumbo. He was talking about uh, the terrestrial map, and it's almost the same thing. It's when you deal with space, and it's almost speculative for us because you can understand how science or physics wants to tell you space works and space time and how all this stuff will function and why in vacuums things operate different. And you can test some of this stuff in <laughs> the physical reality that you're living here on earth but you can't really know or validate it or falsify it externally like you can't go out there and and test it so you're left back with these speculations again when you deal with space and sometimes that's hard for me because uh, I I understand what they're trying to say when you deal with physics but I know as well (laughs) that math is a derivative of axioms and axioms in the most simplest reductionist point is nothing but presuppositions. They're not real. We just have to assume that they exist. This is why geometry is such an accurate math, because geometry is nothing but it's a derivative of axioms. You take away the axioms and geometry doesn't really function. And it's for a lot of math. And so we have to create things like Planck's constant, or we have to create all kinds of constants and stuff so we can play with the math. And so I understand why they do that, but, you know, at some point it still makes my mind say, if at the end of the day you have to create axioms for justified theories to flow, are these theories even explanations of the phenomenon or are they just dreamed up because of the money or propaganda they want to push? And so, therefore, we have to create these axioms. Because a theory, I can create any theory I want, and I can make a math function work if I can be given the freedom to create my own axiom. Like if I say, you have to presuppose that inside of a vacuum, a massless particle, like a photon, has to have X amount of... Uh, whatever 
And if you give me a presupposition, like I can have that axiom, I can start creating a mathematical equation that could justify a phenomenon. But that's all Fugazi, because I could just create it out of nothing, because you gave me the freebie <laughs> of an axiom. Yeah, I was just briefly reading uh, some overviews of this Urantia religion, I guess. Nobody knows who exactly wrote it. It's another one of those tile books. Um, it, uh, I guess, between 1924 and 1955 is when it was originated. But no, nobody really knows its exact origin or its author. So, um, Is it yeah. a moon or is it it's a planet? Urantia, I guess, is supposed to be Earth. Oh. And, mm. Yeah, and uh, how Earth came to be, how we came to be, all this stuff. And it gets into religion. Coincidentally, it gets into Christian religion and the ancient, you know, Adam and Eve and Melchizedek and Jesus and goes into Jesus's, you know, childhood and and then a, adulthood. Well, that's a and big speculative stuff. point. A lot of people do that. It's like that yeah, that time where Jesus Gnostic is born stuff. to twelve years old. That's all that unknown yeah. time frame, and then he finally knows something. So he's like, "I'm about to do something." So let me tell my earthly yeah. parents, "You don't want to mess with my spiritual destiny." I'm willing to bet my top dollar and my bottom dollar and everything in between on the fact that whoever wrote this is going off of Gnostic, the Gnostic Gospels, which is going to be very sad if that's the case. Because nobody actually believes, even, again, agnostic scholars and atheist scholars don't believe the Gnostic Gospels. Well, I mean, you can believe it, but you know, it's just like, like any religion. It's no, just I'm saying, a belief no, 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 no. I'm saying they don't believe the Gnostic Gospels were actually written by who they were, said they were written by. Uh, hence the name Pseudepigraphal. It's, they were... Uh, claiming to be something that they weren't or somebody that they weren't to gain specific clout and popularity and even sell more copies of whatever they're writing. So I can claim to be Paul the Apostle. And now my my letter is going to go everywhere. And there's really no way to identify it, As, especially after the apostles are dead. Now, when the apostles are alive, he can, you know, the Apostle Paul could say, I didn't write this, but... Well, you the know, same after they were dead, that's when all these Gnostic Gospels the same, started circulating. The same scholars will, for the most part, will all agree that the pastoral epistles that were written by Paul, like First, Second Timothy, Titus, all of those, are not written by Paul. They will all almost agree that the pastoral epistles are not from Paul. So yeah, some of them, and there there is a debate over wh who wrote what. Yeah, what at least the stuff. pastoral epistles but is I'm, a bigger consensus amongst those same yeah. agnostic scholars. But, but they're not classified as pseudepigraphal because there are classified as whoever wrote this had genuine intent. They were not claiming to be someone they weren't. So if Paul claimed to write it, then maybe it was Paul. We don't really know. But the, it was obvious. It's obvious to all. There's nobody, nobody claiming that these pseudepigraphal literature, like the Gnostic Gospels, from which we get the life of Jesus, like the uh, teen years of Jesus, the pre-adolescent years, the everything else in between, like all this weird stuff about Jesus is all from late dated pseudepigraphal literature that was way after Paul was dead. But someone's claiming, I'm Paul writing this. It's like, the guy's dead. Well, I came back to life. And it's like, and that's the kind of claims it makes. It's weird, raunchy claims that nobody takes as uh, serious historical accounts. And But it is part of history, but they're not actually believing what is said in there. They're not going to study it as if it's an actual historical account. Yeah, but what they do take in consideration are just like myth theory. I, some scholars believe that, you know, like any myth, these stories come from a derivative of some experience or phenomenon. So some of them believe that maybe that there was enough of these sets to believe this. This is why it lasted 100 years or 150 years because a lot of these writings were... They assume late second century, so like 125, yeah, 150, 175, 80. It's just I you can I would I would encourage anybody to read the Gnostic Gospels. Or well, they're fascinating. It's yeah, kind of like you know, it's kind of like just, reading uh, <coughs> the Book of Enoch. You know, it's it's one of these mystical, yeah, fa at least fascinating books. But the Book of Enoch, even though it is classified as pseudepigraphal, at least because it's somebody claiming yeah, to be Enoch, Enoch. That's right. <laughs> but. Uh, and it, but at least it predates the Gnostic well, yeah, Gospels sure, it, sure. by far, like hundreds of years. Yeah, but it so there's at least some Enoch sway in there. About a couple thousand. Oh years. yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Anyway, 
my point is there is a lot of these weird religions that spark that blew up all over the U.S. after these the the discovery of these Gnostic gospels in 1960 or 1978 or something like that. And you know, uh, well, it's because of the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's where they find most of this stuff, and they mm, realize yeah. that this is. This is at least uh, early second century, late second century. Yeah. Now there was other apocryphal and pseudepigraphal literature discovered way before that, but when when this when it came out, these Gnostic gospels blew up. That's when all of these Urantia style religions blew up. All this stuff, the Great Awakening happened. Uh, it's just it's it's fun, you know, to go down those rabbit trails. It's just. I anytime I well, start I, seeing stuff I like honestly that, like, seen okay. a pattern before all that. There's something weird about the 1800s. Now in the 1800s comes all this weird stuff too. So yeah, I yeah. so I don't know really because there was no discoveries of uh, any kind of biblical documentation really in the 1800s. So I don't know what caused all that nonsense, but there was a bunch of weird stuff going on in the 1800s too. Yeah, if NASA with their heart of heart actually believes in this Urantia stuff. Uh, which coincidentally talks about Jesus's Gnostic gospel life, then I, I have more pity on them than I did before. So that's interesting. If NASA actually believes this as a legitimate, it's like, you guys need to do your homework. This is, what I'm saying is not secret information. You can go Wikipedia. I mean, I actually have scholarly reports of this stuff. I have a question um, for the audience uh, on my... Um, OBS here. It's not saying there's any background music. Do you guys hear the chant music? I can't check it out now. <laughs> if you got, do you guys hear the <laughs> Gregorian chant <laughs> background music? <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> well, I was just making sure that there wasn't something going on because we've been trying to uh, change some of our systems here. And I just wanted to verify <laughs> that you guys can hear the Gregorian chants because they're so important. <laughs> Oh, it's soothing. Uh, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Ron Soul says no. Okay. All right. That's fine. That answers that. Oh. <laughs> what else we got? All right. Uh, well, do you guys like the ch Gregorian chants? Do you want me to leave it in there in the background? <laughs> I do. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I can't speak for you guys. Yeah. I can't hear it, and that's what sucks. I actually want to hear it, but I can't. I guess I could just play it over here like uh, out out here in the real world yeah. and i'm not catholic i just like it because i don't know it's i don't really know why like it's kind of soothing mm. i think the catholics with all their money i think they know how to it's make probably tuned to 432 yeah, hertz probably they they i'm sure they figured out they probably did research on that yeah okay so yeah there's no music okay i'll try to fix that if you guys like it <laughs> anyways uh what else we got rotten soul says can anyone find a video of nasa's of a NASA rocket that flies straight up because I watch about 10 in a row on YouTube and not one went straight up. Now, I heard about that. The reason they say is because you can't come out, you can't go against the atmosphere going straight. You have to go at an angle. And there's already a hole. They Well, at least what I was taught in high school. I don't know why I remember that. They said that there's actually a hole in our atmosphere. Because that was another thing that was brought up. People speculated that NASA wasn't going up again because they didn't want to make our atmosphere like Swiss cheese. This is the this is why we have global warming right now. They say is because uh, uh, the um, sun's UV rays is coming in and it's not being able to escape, or it's escaping too much because of this hole in our ozone layer. It's causing all kinds of problems that you know that that's above my pay grade. That's not my field of study, so. But I'm sure you can find a video of them explaining that. So they say that they try to aim sideways to go out the same hole that they've went out the first time when they went to the moon. And whenever they send satellites farther out, you know, they have to go through the same hole. So they try to calculate uh, that hole, which apparently is growing. So that's why they say that. Now, is it true or not? Well, you just we have to weigh it on our logical tenability because we cannot experience it ourselves. Well, I, I don't know about any of that, but I, I know that what they, what I've read is it's because of speed and altitude. They can't get enough speed if they go straight. They, they use what's called gravity turn, and they use gravity to achieve speed. Yeah, if you don't believe in gravity, then yeah, that itself is already thrown out the window. But they, that's the reason why they, I've read that they do curves 
trajectory. It goes up straight, but then it starts curving to use gravity itself to am amplify the speed of the rocket. So, but, you know, this is all coming down to aerodynamics and understanding how all that works. And again, this is back to that mass stuff again. And I'm sure if we get the paper out and the pencils and the axioms, the math adds up. The, the question is, is are we required to believe it? No, we're not required to believe it, but that's what they're going to tell us. And if you don't believe the math, they're just going to say, well, that's what we do. That's why we fly rockets and you don't. So you're, you're left back out with. Yeah, that's when we say, do you fly rockets, though? Somebody. Made out of tinfoil and. Well, today it's not. It's like, today, can, I, can I see that rocket that you flew? At least today, <laughs> it's, they have more believable rockets for sure today. It's yeah. not made out of aluminum foil. I was actually thinking about starting a GoFundMe account for the man that they left on the moon who recorded the rocket taking off. We've all seen the famous footage. He's still up there, and nobody cares, but I do. Well, they said it was the uh, the rover that was left behind that had a camera on it, and that's what filmed it's, it taking off. It's wiggling. Off. Like, the camera, it looks like a human is holding it out, unless humans, well, I, I don't know. Unless robots. All I'm saying is what they said. They said it was a mounted camera on the rover that was left there, and it filmed it going up. That's what they said. Right. And how was it there to see the rocket landing for the first time? How did they explain that? Oh, I, I don't know. Because we do have footage of the rocket landing, too. Yeah, but I, that's okay. I, I don't know. You know, I care. I don't know. I, again, like I said, I don't... Does Anything I'm saying doesn't mean I believe it or I know. not. I, I'm just telling you what they say. I just... <laughs> my heart goes out for the guy that's been left up there for all these years. And we've been trying to get back to him. We just... We're out of tinfoil... We've been using it for our heads too much, <laughs> for hats. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I don't. I, I might start a GoFundMe account for that guy on the moon. I wish I even. We don't even know his name. We don't even know his we'll name. Call him Rover. Maybe that's why they always say, you know, come here, Rover. Yeah. Or Ma maybe maybe it was an innuendo. Maybe or Roger. Yeah. You know. Roger that. Yeah. Roger this. Roger that. Yeah. You know, Rover. Who's afraid of the come big here, black Rover. bat? I don't know. Rover seems more plausible. It's like a dog. Yeah, see, they even call him a dog. It's like, if that's the case, that's just sad. It's like, I mean, that's what... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. It's going to bring me to tears. Okay. <coughs> Foxy says, there's what people tell me, <laughs> what I think, and the truth. That's good. <laughs> I agree. That's how you should, you know, kind of like a three-layer thing. You hear what somebody tells you, including us, as truthful as we are. <laughs> as truthful as everyone is well even truth has to be partitioned yeah you should always take it with a grain of sand let it don't let it just slide by let it like get some grip with sand you know it's like sandpaper you know there are there are some scientists out there and i guess one big person that does that aggravates me is people like uh science boy what's his name uh which one both of them Talking about the boat engineer? Yeah, wait, what's his name? <laughs> Bill Nye. Bill Nye, and, the and boat then, engineer guy. And then, yeah. Uh, Mick Tyson, whatever his name <laughs> is. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. They, you know, they both use this word consensus. And it's so abused. The science is supposed to be not about consensus, but about testing explanational or you're supposed to explore explanational power. That's all a theory is. Nobody disagrees on phenomenon. Everybody can disagree on explanation. But these guys, they say science isn't about debate. It's about consensus. And I said, that is, man, that is just so radical. And, and you know what's crazy is people believe that. Yeah, the same people that use that word consensus are people that are taking bathroom doors off of little girls' rooms and bathroom stalls in middle school. Like in Texas, what happened, uh, I think, was that a few months ago? Uh, yeah, the principal, he, he'll use words like consensus. and See, I don't mind. Co consensus has its spot. Like if there's politics, there's a consensus. If there's an opinion, there's a consensus. If you have an ideological viewpoint, you're trying to perform rhetoric, there's a consensus. Science is supposed to not be a part of consensus. It's supposed to have the highest form of evidence correlated with the explanation that you're giving so if i say this is why a ball when i throw it up falls down i'm going to give you my explanation and then i'm going to provide as much evidence which is falsifiable the evidence is falsifiable 
and this is what it is. And then multiple people test my explanation. And we come to a point to where we see this is what time after time after time happens. We, we believe it. And it's not because everybody says, well, most of us agree on it. So we've come to a consensus to say that this is science. It's because every time you test it, that it manifests. The math is the same way. There's an equation that can quantify certain aspects of something, and then we do it every time, and the calculator every time says this, then yeah, I don't need a consensus. It's just an, it's a verifiable or at least something that could be falsifiable, testable evidence of something. And then anybody can do it, and then anybody who does it, it manifests the same answer. I don't need a consensus. That's just... The theory has enough evidence on its own. But when people say uh, there's a consensus among scientists that this is true, so you must believe it. I, I don't I, I'm just saying you guys gotta run you gotta run from people who try to enforce you or indoctrinate you by consensus. So let me ask you something, Foxy. Is what you think it is, is there a way to grit to bridge the gap between what you think and the truth. Can you know the truth? Well, I think there's a difference between objective truth and absolute truth. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. By, I, I think what she's implying is objective truth. So if you believe in objective truth, which I also believe that there is an objective truth, uh, is there a way to know what the objective truth is? Like, can you know it? Because you say there's what people tell you. There's what you think, and then there's, I'm assuming, objective truth. Can you bridge the gap between what you think and objective, like, can you know it? Or is it something unknowable and un unobtainable? I think objective, tr like in my opinion, I think objective truth is something that we do through experiments, and experiments prove an objective truth. But I don't believe experiments prove absolute truth. Because at one point in time, this experiment might be right as an objective truth, but we may gain further information in the future, which provides even more clarity to the explanation. It has a better explanation, which doesn't debunk the first explanation, but it has a better one, which proves that the first objective truth was not really as objective. So it's not an absolute truth. It means it never changes. So I think there still has to be a layer. There has to be something that never changes no matter what it cannot change that would be an absolute truth and then there's objective truth which has to do with my reality how i experience stuff and this is real but there may be a better answer in the future that doesn't change that it's objective but it does change in the future like newtonian physics compared to einsteinian idea well we'll just say for gravity because we're not talking about particle physics or quantum physics so Foxy also says, we would have to rotate because we have day and night. Well, not necessarily on a flat earth model. Uh, if the flat earth is the truth and we can know it. There's a lot of working flat earth models out there. <coughs> um, in which it actually explains a lot of phenomena. Like you go to uh, Alaska and you see the sun actually it barely goes down like you'll see it go in circles like this so alaska in the flat earth model is actually very close to the center of the flat earth model world and if that's the case then the the sun is going like this so it's always revolving around alaska now it does turn night in alaska when the sun goes a little bit farther away but as the sun rotates these parts of the earth wherever it is is getting light and the moon is on the opposite side and it's where over the darkness on the opposite side of the rotating uh, spinning dome some flat earthers believe it's attached to the dome itself so the dome itself is actually rotating which is uh, the dome also has the stars in, uh, uh, on it so that's why you see stars rotating because the dome itself actually has the sun the moon and the stars all on it so the whole dome is actually rotating earth is actually just staying still um, but again I think this was in reference to when I was talking about the $20,000, the most expensive and most accurate gyroscope you can buy. And a flat earth, a flat earther bought it to prove his point. And it actually ended up proving that the earth is rotating, unfortunately for him. So now again, there's, there's an explanation for everything. So maybe the flat earth is actually rotating. And the dome, we'll never see it because we'll never see what's outside the dome because the dome actually has the stars, the moon, and the sun on it. So everything outside of the dome 
could actually be pink, you know, for all we know. We don't know because nobody's actually ever been outside the dome, according to the flat earth uh, model. So anyway, it, it could rotate uh, or maybe it doesn't. Who knows? And who could know? And it, if <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, have you guys heard about that new thing that Amazon was trying to propagate? They say by the end of the year, they're going to put out this thing called a palm scanner. And everywhere you go, they're going to make you pay through palm scanning. And so I just thought it was interesting. It's not good enough for them to get face scanning, biometrical scanning, iris scanning, fingerprint scanning. Now they want to scan your palm out of all things. It's like, don't, <laughs> is it my face enough? But I read that by the end of the year, all whole, whole food stores are going to be having these palm scanners for purchases. You know, it's, 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 it's sick because now all the palm readers in New York are going to go out of business. Like, so AI is now taking the jobs of palm readers. As you guys can see on the screen, this is that uh, article from MSNBC or CBS. It says Amazon to launch, launch pay by palm technology at all Whole Foods stores by year end so I, I think it's actually kind of interesting that they're not satisfied with enough biometrical scanning that they want to now do our palms uh, eventually they just probably want to do our whole body we might as well just get naked <laughs> I already am underneath my clothes I'm naked anyways yeah. but I'm, I'm there, there it's like there's no job that's sacred anymore like every job is getting taken they took over the janitors they're taking over uh, you know, Amazon warehouses with AI robots, and now they're taking over palm reading. You can't even leave it to the uh, uh, the the, what, what, the scientists, the, the psychics, uh, clairvoyant, clairvoyant, clairvoyant. Yeah, you people. can't even give the clairvoyances their clairvoyance. Like yeah. they they're the palm readers. Yeah. At least let them continue being palm readers. That's what I'm saying. It's like literally no job is safe right now. Who would have thought that palm readers would be out of obsolete? Uh, AI's taking palm reading. Uh, it's sick. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was crazy. It's like our face isn't enough. I think I'm going to be sick. Now, it might as well just, like I say, might as well just get naked. Because eventually they're going to tell you, we need to do a stomach reading. You need to do a back reading. You need to do a butt reading. <laughs> like, cough to the right. Yeah, I got to step on a, measure my foot. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was crazy. I just wanted to share that with you guys. To me, it was just it's kind of kind of crazy. What else we got? Uh, Noah Cloud says, "LOL." I also don't believe my own BS a lot of the time. Also, <laughs> well, that's good because that's what a lot of us propagate. And you know what? It's okay. Our thoughts is where we learn the most. Because if you're just a regurgitator from an echo chamber, whenever you're questioned, you have no answer. You know, it's like a calculator. A calculator is not very smart. It's just programmed with something to regurgitate. And so, therefore, it does. And it's consistent at doing it, but it's not very intelligent. But when you start to have free roam, like a free roam video game, you, you can go explore stuff. You start to get to know your world. It's the same thing with a thought. You may not believe anything you're saying, but at least you're roaming and you're experiencing and thinking about it. You get to know the world and uh, you learn a lot more that way. So, yeah, it's good. I mean, I think it's the best thing to do. Yeah, there has to be a balance. I'm sure you know that. Like, I, I, I say hats off. Literally, my hat is off. That's why I'm not wearing one to you, Noah Cloud, because you can actually see that not everything you think and say is true. But there's some people out there that they actually believe every word that comes out of their mouth. And they actually live on this planet with us. And they end up, you know, causing a lot of problems for the rest of us, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. It, so, but there has to be a balance. Because it's not like you can't believe every word that comes out of your mouth. I'm sure you know this. I'm preaching to the crowd right now. But uh, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathtub. Uh, you definitely want to keep the bathtub and the baby because bathtubs are expensive and babies are more expensive. <laughs> so you want to keep both of them, but throw the water out and then put clean water into it. Um, what that means, <laughs> what that means is 
not everything you say is also false either. So there's going to be truth in what you say and think, and your job as a human being is to figure out which parts, you know, is true and which parts are not. That's coming out of your own mouth. And again, I know you know that, so... But maybe for the other listeners who have never thought about that, you know, something to think about. Not everything's false, not everything's true that comes out of your mouth. Uh, Jerembo says, I don't know what the Gregorian chant is. <laughs> well, uh, look it up on YouTube. Yeah, it's just like monk chanting, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, oh, It's just that, you know, what was that video game, Halo? It's something like background chanting music. I just thought it was something that probably would balance out the voice, the sound of our voices. But it was really light in the background. But that's all it is. Gregorian chants are like monk chants. It's the sound of bondage. Tuned at 432 hertz and not 440 hertz. That's another conspiracy. Mm. Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about none of that. I'm not inserting anything like that. <laughs> I uh, am. Yeah, I'm just asserting people are messing with frequencies. Well, uh, there are some really cringy videos, too, if you find the right ones. There's Gregorian chants where, like, there's this one monk, and you can see it's, like, really, I don't really know how to explain it. He's on a boat, and he's singing. He's like, no, and he's on a boat just, like, drifting away on camera. And it's something that you definitely want to see before you die. Yeah, well, anyways, what else? <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, Ron Soul says Rover. So, <laughs> yeah, come here, Rover. <laughs> Roll over, Rover. Yeah. Uh, Bruce House, hello, Bruce House. He says in the house. Uh, yes, in the straight off to his house. Um, are superheroes really just to maintain the status quo? Well, first hit that like button, <laughs> so you we can participate in the superhero. Uh, so I don't. My theory on superheroes is just like anything. It's a myth. It's an archetype. It's a derivative of something something that we saw as a phenomenon, and then we hyperbolicize it. Like, in all history and civilizations, there's always been strong men or people with, like, abilities of illusion. So you call them magicians, or uh, there were intelligent people, uh, something like that. There's somebody who stuck out in your society, and this goes back to the beginning first societies. And then you build up this hyperbolic idea. Like, you give them more special powers. You give them more abilities. And then they turn into superheroes or gods or whatever. And then the myth evolves. And then you pass this down like a scary story. Like, you know, there was this dark, gloomy night. And there was this guy. It's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think that exists because there's real anomalies in the world. That's just the facts. And humans love to feel like... I can inspire. I could be inspired to become like this anomaly, and I think that's why humans attach themselves to superhero stories. And I think that's good for children. They need something to aspire to. So, you know, a lot of them. Say, I want to be a firefighter or a policeman or an astronaut or something. Those are like their superheroes in real life. And what if the heroes, though, are portrayed as people that, uh, you know, maybe transparent? In today's age, yeah, it becomes more social in the construct. It's like the freedom fighters and stuff. But, you know, in some sense, that's a little bit sad because I think when you get old, you can start to be specific. You start to put away the uh, Easter bunny and you put away the tooth fairy and you start realizing the real what heroes. The, well, you realize what those symbolized. Yeah. They, had a, they had an archetypical meaning, which was something like the tooth fairy was these your you yourself has an intrinsic value and so don't think that you, even your lost tooth is doesn't have intrinsic value you as a human have value and this there's this fairy out there keeping human parts <laughs> sounds kind of strange but it's because humans are valuable so there's this archetypical meaning and but when you grow up you realize that and i don't need a tooth fairy anymore now i just have this ethical understanding why humans are valuable but yeah, when we get older and we're still believing in fairy tales and then we're trying to propagate the fairy tale and then we try to convince other people that dogma, like if you don't believe in this fairy tale, then you are not telling the truth. Or I, I don't know. It gets weird. Yeah. I think there's a time for that. 
is a time to grow up and you start realizing that the real heroes are human traffickers. You, you and those <laughs> are real, those are the people really wearing the capes. And, you know, and we're trying to be sensitive because we're, we know we're going to get demonetized. Like this last episode that I just put up, 060, uh, the biometrical matrix, the full episode that just got posted today, it already got demonetized. <laughs> it didn't get banned, but it got demonetized. So what I did is I just took off all monetization. Because, see, if I don't, they're still going to play ads and they're still going to get their money, but they're not going to pay us anything. So I just took all, all monetization, so there's no ads, so enjoy. They're not getting paid. We're not getting paid. Nobody's getting paid. And you guys get free ad-less uh, episodes. Because it's the best thing I can do. If they're going to say we're not going to monetize it, I'm not going to give them a free ride. So I just took off monetization. But that, this happens a lot, so we're trying to... Be careful because if you talk about certain ghosts out here, they they they're gonna get you. Yeah, spoken like a true hero. That happens all the time. That's why I tell you we, we barely get monetized. <laughs> they dock everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Noah Cloud says some people think they're so smart that it's made them stupid. They end up thinking that they can't <laughs> be tricked. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that's pathological. Yeah. Silly rabbit. Tricks are for prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Foxy says, well, can anything be proven to be absolute truth? Because the constant will eventually have an anomaly. You see, that's the hard thing. Well, I don't absolute know. Absolute truth. Like unchanging <clears throat> truth. I think uh, there is such thing, and I, I, you guys have heard me talk about my table analogy or tree analogy. Yeah, but that's a phenomenon. The very We're talking about explanations. Common. Can explanation, because nobody argues about phenomenon. It's the explanations. Can there ever be an explanation that's unchanging? Not a phenomenon. Everybody will say there's a table, but the explanation of the table, like how did it get here? Oh, if you're talking about, okay. So that's, certain answers. No, it's like when well, a ball. At least you can say it's here. When the ball drops. Everybody wants to know why does it drop. That explanation is what everybody argues. Nobody's going to argue about a ball. No, everybody nobody's, knows it's because it's New Year's. Yeah, nobody's going to argue about the ball. <laughs> everybody nobody's going to argue dropping. that it falls to the ground. But everybody wants to know, is it really the secret Easter bunny that's making it fall? No, it's New Year's Eve. Yeah, and see, that's, that's why that's it's what I'm saying. the answer is there. The <laughs> proof is actually inside of the pudding. <laughs> the absolute I mean, truth is the explanation, and it, can there ever be an explanation that's absolute truth? Okay. Yeah, that but that's, is, I don't think that's, that's the only that's, thing people argue about. Nobody I, argues okay. about phenomenon. I don't think, well, they, okay, well, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, Foxy, but it does, I don't see you asking if, you're at, you're like, because it's the theories why. that people What's that care? called, ontology or why things exist? But you're asking, like, you're asking if there's a such thing as absolute truth. I'm going to say yes, again, because nobody can disprove it so far. Again, I, and I'm going to use a table again because it's so easy. Everybody has a table in their house. If somebody says, and I'm sitting, leaning on this table right now. If somebody says, this table does not exist, I'm going to tell them, run as fast as you can right through it. If they go under it or over it or around it, that's just acknowledging that it exists. I want to see them run as fast as they can right through it. Of course, they're not going to do it because they know it exists. Now, we can debate. Here's where the relativity comes in. You can debate the color. You can debate the name. Uh, you know, your perception of it, the shape of in your stance of it, of your, per, your view. But nobody's going to deny that this table is actually right here. And in fact... If, if you get a blind person from the across in China or Africa and have a blind person walk through it, they're not going to be able to walk through it either. An animal can't walk through the table. Nobody's going to be able to walk through this table. Even a, you can take inanimate objects, inanimate objects, such as a laptop or a rock, and throw it on the table. The rock is going to agree with what everybody sees, that it's going to bounce right there. And coincidentally, everybody's going to see right there that there's a surface there's something right there you can debate the name and the color but the texture and like the actual exact dimensions of the table to the millimeter the nanometer everybody's going to agree coincidentally like i said i don't think anybody if you i've said this in the last stream there's two things there's phenomenon and explanation and that's all existence is nothing but phenomenon and explanation Nobody agrees with disagrees with phenomenon. If they do, you go, you become institutionalized. That's when everybody will say you're crazy. But 
everybody argues about explanation. So yeah, if you're asking why things are here, why is the table here? Who put us here on Earth? Who made the Earth? Yeah, that's, or whatever. That's, that's the, a different question. See, science I think. science doesn't argue phenomenon. Every science, anything, I don't care what belief you have. I know science agrees on phenomenon. What they disagree on is what's causing it. Why is the ball falling? And everybody sees the ball falling. And if you well, deny... They already know. It's New Year's Eve. That's if, why the ball falling. If falls. anybody denies a ball is falling, you're getting institutionalized. Well, no, it's just because you're not in New York or wherever they no, drop balls. No, it's because you can't see what everybody sees. <laughs> That's why you're well, getting... Just turn on your TV. You can well, see they it have right word, there. They have words for this. <laughs> like, you know, you're getting dementia or you're hallucinating. You know, there's words for that. But if you... But we have a right to disagree on explanation. But that's the problem. Can there ever be explanation that's absolute truth? And sure. I was like, that. Well, that's a different topic. But that's what people think. It's like well, the I'm science. A, like I'm, science I'm, tries I'm, to tell no. you. I'm talking about absolute truth as pertains to phenomenon. But sure, you can say that. I'm just saying there is a table here, and anybody that wants but to. But I don't think it. anybody denies okay, that fine. empirically. But, well, interestingly, this anomaly doesn't change. It seems to be a constant because we can move the table. Again, you can debate the color, the name of it. You can call it a glocka glocka. Nobody cares. You can move it. It's still staying constant because still <laughs> nobody can run through that table. Nobody can run through the table. Nobody. And it, the first person that does, they will make everybody a believer that we are in a simulation or we are you know, everything is subjective. But we live in objective reality. Like, again, the table is just a... a what I'm using as a, uh, an archetype of the rest of everything else. You can use a tree, you can use your car, you can use a rock, you can use your house, anything that is there objectively. Coincidentally, everyone will agree it's there, even a blind person. Doesn't matter if they're handicapped, doesn't matter if it's an animal. I mean, animals stop at fences, not because they can just walk halfway through it and just sit there, but because the fence, you know, they don't want to touch a fence, especially if it's electric. So they're going to go around. They're acknowledging the fence's existence. You didn't have to teach them that. You have to do nothing. And everybody, everything will acknowledge this fence. If a tree falls, it's going to stop on the fence or at least crush the fence. So there isn't a. I'm convinced that there's an objective truth. Now, again, I could be wrong, but somebody has to show me, prove me wrong, walk through a solid object, and then I'll believe you. Well, I don't think anybody's going to deny phenomenon. I think it's explanation. It's like if somebody says. Somebody, if somebody sees a car, everybody's going to believe there's a car. It's yeah, who made the can, car? You can argue yeah. ontology all day. Like You can argue the name of the car. You can argue the color of the car. You can argue why people made the car. But nobody's going to argue that this object is yeah, right here with the I, same exact dimensions. I don't think anybody cares about phenomenon. They want to know the what, the where, the when, the how. The, that, that's what makes us human. Even animals can accept phenomenon. It's, well, it's us humans that want to know why. What I want to know is what else is objective. If there is a such thing as objective truth, which to me it seems like there is, and again I could be wrong, but to me so far it seems like there is an objective truth like this table. What else can I find that is an objective truth out there? And that's a fascinating rabbit trail to go down. But, but. you know, this could go down even deeper. Is everything forced to follow the constructs of my conscious reality? What about particles? You know, particles, if it gets like a condensate. <laughs> you know, when you think about quantum ideas like a Einstein Bose condensate or a boson condensate. Only bosons can be condensates because... A anyways, if you... Like a super fluid, it gets it's cooled down to like negative, negative 217 degrees Fahrenheit. The, it's a bunch of lattices and they're frozen so things can actually go through because it's in a state where the quantum positions don't change and so you have a condensate and particles can go through that it has to go through the holes in the lattice yeah right? and okay. because they're not moving right so it, what happens if it hits the lattice part itself well there are there's already a, 
we already can do. And so even what you're telling me is that there's still an objective reality no, what on the quantum. No, level. what I'm saying is they can go through a table. They could go through anything. You're not actually going through the lattice part of the table. You're going through the holes of the table. The yeah. table is still there. Because what we and the see, objective because reality, what the we lattice see, is, as you say, Because still what there. we see here is something where we can't go through. I know. But if you get down to the quantum level, you can go through it. Yeah, as long as you go through the holes. But the, it's, ob it's observable. If we could That's see right. the holes, and then we would go through the holes. That's right. Yeah. You have to make sure, though, you stay clear of the lattice uh, yeah, but, fence thing, but that's because what I'm if saying. you hit that, then you're going to bounce off again, just like. You know, so there's still objective truth. No, but my you have to go through the hole. That's, the, you can do that today. No, my point is, is what you think is a table, on a quantum level, is not really a table. It's just a bunch of particles. That's okay. Yeah, that's why I said you can argue the. And you can freeze you can those particles if you cool it enough. That's what you call a condensate. Sure. And at that point, you can go through the the spaces. Sure. You can saw the table in half, and then you can walk through it. But you still have to saw in half to walk through. No, it. you don't have to change. You don't have to change the infrastructure on a, in a condensate. Then why freeze it? No, you, that's so not. So you can pass things through the that holes. That does. If I freeze a human, that doesn't change the human. It can change his. It can change maybe. Some I don't know. You can't still yeah. put your finger through a human. I know. Once you once they're frozen. That's called objective reality. No, but if if you cool down any material well it has to be a boson you so can create a condensate the uh, if you zoom up or bring it to a real day life thing it's like saying yeah, in the classical well level, just it's because different. there's this chain link fence here um you could pass things through it so that must mean that the chain link fence doesn't actually exist because if you do it just right and if you throw a piece of a uh, straw it's just right and it passes through one of the holes on the fence that must mean the fence doesn't exist. Well, like, no, in the, no quant in the quantum level, it's not like that. It's like, well, if I try to take a bigger object, like a car, and it goes to the fence and it stops, or it just runs over the fence but it damages the car, then that must prove that the fence doesn't exist. It's like, no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. So it's the same thing. Just because you zoom down to a quantum scale and you say there's lattice, just like a chain link fence, and that if you freeze it to freeze the lattice form, then you can pass things gently through the holes of the lattice. It's like, it's still there. It the goes lattice deeper, is still there. It goes deeper than that. The classical laws don't apply in the quantum world. So why can't you just, why do you have to freeze it to pass things through the lattice holes? Why don't Everything just in the moving? quantum world is a wave. It, they're, like, you see things objectively. If you see things in the quantum world, you only see... So you're saying there's measurements, no but measurements themselves, those particles, when you measure them, they're not there anymore. And so that's why you call it, it's called the wave function. So you're saying that scientists, quantum mechanics say that there's no objective reality within quantum. Well, it's not a, it's mechanics. not measurable. There's a, there's principles for this. It's not measurable because yeah, they are called quantum mechanics. No, no, it's not measurable. They, they they do mechanics it, on a quantum level. No, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I mean, if anybody in here is familiar with quantum mechanics, tell me. It's not you. You can isolate the idea of an existence or a time, but you can like if you see a measurable particle hitting another particle, you can have this thing that it looks like a particle, but really what it is is just a wave that oscillates. And that oscillation, when you measure it, observe it, it looks like a particle because it's a space at an isolated location. But if you were to go back to measure that particle, it's not there anymore. So it looks like a particle, but it's really just an oscillation in a wave. And that's but what they would call the wave function. Some people believe wave functions collapse. Uh, I don't personally believe they're collapse. So there is a such thing as a wave function, yeah. objectively. Uh, no, it's what we would, s at some point, that's what you call a superposition. Okay, that's why so something. There is a such thing as a superposition, objectively. That, and what superposition. Yeah, I, I understand. And yeah, what a superposition. A split photon would, experiment. No, no, that. no, 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 no. They, people get that wrong, too. They think that means you, as an observer, changes something. That's no, not what that's it is. That's not what I'm saying either. I, I'm saying there is objective reality, even on the quantum level. I'm, I'm waiting to, for you to explain Well, me it's that like Schrodinger's not. cat. There's no objective truth until there's a point of looking in the box. Before you look in the box, there is no objective truth. The only thing you can say is there's something, but we don't know what's the position of this something until there's a time where you want to measure this something, or we'll say a particle. But if you ask the scientist, Schrodinger, or Gunger, I can never remember his name, if you asked him, was, there, was it a cat or a dog 
He's gonna say, "Well, it's a cat. I just don't know if the cat's alive or not alive." Well, you you could go either way. You could say, "Is there a particle in there or not?" I don't know. Yeah, they're, but they're gonna say there is a particle. We just don't know if it's taking a wave form or a particle. No, form. no, 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 no. Or no, no. if it's in by based on anyway. Well, it depends if if you're the because there's multiple formats of quantum theory. Depends if you b are one of the people who believe in a collapse or non-collapsible wave function. So, where do we get to the part where there's no objective reality in quantum mechanics? Well, it's not so much there's not objective, it's just more dealing with probabilities. Okay. It's probable. Which requires an objective reality. Well, some probability. something is, but it's not, it's the, the rules of classical physics doesn't apply in right. a quantum world. Again, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm right on this, I'm just saying, Based on my logical tenability, I have to believe there's an objective reality right now. Unless somebody puts a more consistent logic proving that there is no objective reality, then I'll have to say, okay, well, I'll get rid of that idea. But somebody's got to show me a more consistent way to go. But right. I, don't, I don't think people should dictate their life choices on quantum mechanical law. It, because classical... It wouldn't matter if you did. It's well, still I'm saying objective I, just, I don't so. think people should because there's no way to function in that way. I, I do because everything's probable. It's not that it's the measurement of a particle is not realistic. It's just probable. So I would say in a classical world, which we live in, we need to deal with our phenomenons, which everybody agrees are real. And if you don't, you're crazy. And then we have to figure out what's the explanations. And I think that's what makes us human is figuring out why something happens. Like, why is the ball falling? But I think we all have to agree the ball is falling. I think the people who disagree that the ball is falling, well, I, I, there's words for that. Like, yeah, it's called New Yorkians. Well, the, the people get institutionalized, and it's <laughs> unfortunate, but that's why we say there's something wrong that you're. And you know, it's weird because I've seen people with dementia, and it's weird because they're seeing something, and it's real. And I'm like, it, and it, it, they're so convincing that at some point it starts making you think. D is do what they're seeing is it more real than what I'm seeing? Are we all duped? And are they seeing because they are real? They believe that thing. So, but the, you know that that's the facts. Is there's a phenomenon, but they have a phenomenon too. So th that's when it gets weird. But that's what we call that hallucinations or dementia or something. And we have to because if not, then we would be arguing with phenomenon, and that's a crazy world. We can't have that world. Yeah. Well, Noah Cloud says, you can make a latex cast of a hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was in reference to what The Amazon palm reader. Was it? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. I thought it was in reference to yeah, something else, but I that makes more sense. I guess, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what am. All okay, I'm well, that's good then. That means the palm readers... Uh, do still have a job because they'll be able to tell if this is a fake hand or not. Yeah, I, again, I don't know what Amazon is. Like, there are so many things you can do. I mean, this sounds suspect. <laughs> this just sounds suspect. It's almost like a polemic, like they're mocking me. It's like, hey, guys, I know I can skin your eye. I know I can skin your face. I know I can skin your finger. Hey, I know you could just swipe your debit card, but I want you to scan your palm. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's absolutely Please identify yourself. <laughs> it's absolute glory to man. <laughs> it's just weird. All right, Foxy says, years ago I followed a channel that was explaining the fourth dimension. I remember watching you talking about it. Yeah, because you know there's that theory where people, it's like I have a I have a shadow. It's a two dimensional observation of a reflection of myself. Well, the fourth dimension is just time. Yeah, but not in in reality. It's the three dimensions, and then we add the fourth dimension of time. But our existence is like our physical body is three-dimensional then we add time to yeah, allocate so you where, can move. yeah where we where we so we can locate yeah but the body is three-dimensional but let's assume there's a fifth dimension and there's a body in the fifth dimension how do we know that we're just not a shadow of the fifth dimensional creature because our shadow that we see today is a two-dimensional uh, reflection of a th of a th three-dimensional creature so how do we not know that we're just not a shadow of a higher dimensional creature? Yeah, we very well could be. Yeah. 
Uh, Ron Soul says, "Did you see the robot that killed itself after working a basic job?" Yeah, we <laughs> we I, you know I actually talked about that robot even before that robot got viral. That company's called Agility Robotics, and I I because there's a whole bunch of robots. I mean, we have talked about almost all the robotic companies. Yeah, but then I saw there was a video that went viral maybe about a month or two ago where he was at a conference and he was just picking up those buckets and putting them down. And then all of a sudden he stopped and he just fell over. <laughs> and everybody was saying, oh, he committed suicide because he got he started thinking, if I have to do this forever, I don't want to live. Or maybe he knew too much. And then the government said, yeah, schwack him. Yeah, well, what they said was he ran out of battery juice. So he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. You know, everybody commits suicide. Yeah, well, anyways, I don't know, but I saw that. Yeah, but the company's called Agility Robotics. Uh, hold on, I lost my spot. Okay, Ron Soul says it was an AI robot. Oh, yeah, I probably should have read that. Oh, Ron Soul also requests that we play the Halo music. So, I don't know if I can because of copyrights. That's don't I see chant music. Nobody cares. <laughs> uh-huh. Nobody's copyrighting chant music. But Halo, I think that's owned by Microsoft, which I think they just bought Activision, or they're still in the limbo of that. I think I might get a copyright on that. Too bad you can't play Nacho Libre music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sp- <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am. And that's Catholic, so. Anyway, Spy Pigeon says, 07 boys, hope all is well. Hey, Spy Pigeon, I ain't seen you in a while. Mm. I ain't heard from you in a while. Hope you're doing well. Hello, hello. Correcto mundo, gizmo. Ryan says, shout out, Brandon Schwab. Shout out, Ryan and Brandon Schwab. Yeah, I feel like this is deja vu. They always call you Brandon Schwab. Oh, who is that? It's some comedian. Oh. Cool. I think he looks like you. That's why. Let's check it out. I'm typing him in right now. Mm. But first, let me get back to these messages. Uh, Kaz official says uh, there was a show about people with superpowers. Kind of Stan Lee made it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember that there was this uh, uh, monk, like a, a kung fu monk or something, and he said he could handle a drill press pressed to his temple. I remember that. And there was like, another guy who could. Like, have special hearing, or another guy get punched in the stomach or something. But the one guy that stuck out was this Shylin monk or something. And he says, look, I can handle. Like, they had like a half-inch drill bit on this electric drill. And you could put it to his temple. And the whole time I'm waiting, it's like, because, you know, they build it up. They're like, oh, yeah, this monk did this. And they build up this whole biography. And then at the end, they're like, now we're going to do it. I'm like, is this real? Are they going to do it? And I don't know if they really pushed down or not or whatever, but he made it. But, yeah, I remember that show. It's humans, real humans with real superhero powers. Yeah, there's another guy that could actually bend a wrench with his hands. I thought that was impressive. Now, that monk, though. I was like, wow. I was like, if anybody, I mean, it's. Yeah, yeah, I know uh, that, too. (laughs) That guy was. you You could go through, a dull bit can go through wood. A dull bit. They had a fresh bit, fresh, sharp bit. The skin is going to start building up and crunching together, and it's not going to be pretty, but he I, he made it. It's literally the epitome of mind over matter because he actually put his mind well, over I, the drill. I, that just seemed like that's when I said this has to be scripted. <laughs> There's no way. Well, I don't even know what you could use that for. It's like, so what are you going to do? Of well, course, I, he's just impermeable. If that can happen, maybe bullets don't go through him. Maybe nothing goes through him. Yeah, so why doesn't he go fight in war or something? I don't know. Or maybe, I guess that's the other thing. It's like, okay, maybe so you're going to be peace. peaceful. I know. Yeah. So what? what is this? I don't know. Are you saying that your God created you on oh, accident? The, now, I think that was also the same show that showed that Indian guy who could have electric yeah. current go through him. Yeah. yeah. There's that guy, too. Yeah. I, I, I just don't understand. It's like, you know, if you if you want to show the world that you have this superpower, uh, and especially as a religious person, so, such as Shaolin Monk Man, uh, I don't know why you wouldn't use that for good. Do something, you know. You can go just knock some cats out of trees with your head. Uh, <laughs> you can you maybe, can go. Maybe he's a spokesperson for the chi, the force, the power. Yeah, but why? It's like, why are you running your mouth? You should be running your head. Like, you should be running towards everything head first. Maybe like, they're encouraging people to come to the, to the peaceful side. 
and be be a part of the force. That's not what I got when I'm watching him have this drill, this power drill. Uh, at his head, he's like, Arr! it's like that doesn't look peaceful. Like it looks like he's ready for combat. Anyways, what else we yeah, got? I digress. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So I looked up Brandon Schwab. You know, I'm actually flattered. You guys say that I look like a Walmart version of Channing Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and there's another guy. I can't remember some other guy who's on some show. I, I don't know what the show is. I don't know who that guy is. Brandon Schwab, I'm flattered. The guy looks, he looks stacked. So looks like he uh, kind of, his style kind of sucks, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. What else we got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, hold on. Last week, you guys, one of you guys, I don't remember who, said that we looked like Basil and Bonzo or something. What were their names? Ba- Basil and Bonds, Bonds, Gons, Gons. Are you talking about the Canary Show? Yeah. You know, that's not very nice for them. Because I'm sure they don't want to be associated with toilet time television. If anybody, if that ca- if they catch wind that they're connected to us, uh, I think they're going to not be flattered. Maybe. So we'll see. That's not nice. You guys should play fair. <laughs> that's just... Yeah, but these ones, you know, keep the Carl Schwab you know, I, stuff I didn't even that's know flattering. of those people, but, you know, that's cool. I can see the resemblance. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe you're talking about the content because they, uh, they're straight conspiracy on that next echelon. Yeah, you can tell they actually have passion. Yeah. And they, they actually care about stuff. One guy's actually wearing a mask with two big old googly eyes. It's like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to hack that. Like, I, I could never do that on television. Yeah. Like, I would, but eventually... The mask would come off. I, I like to expose myself in front of everyone. You gotta let it shine through you. <laughs> yeah, I try to. What else we got? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Rotten Soul says a super solid could go through the table. If it's a condensate, yeah. But anyways, I already talked about that. If you, yeah. So, anyways, who cares? Um plug hit that like button <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know if people really want to talk about those kind of things but well, i'll read a couple more comments yeah. on the table and maybe we can touch yeah. those briefly on the table stuff <laughs> table talk uh noah cloud says i identify as a person that doesn't see a falling ball yeah yeah i mean today's that's what i was actually alluding you know myths used to be something worth inspiring to. I think this is how we even got the superheroes. And so, because children would do that. And they're like, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be whatever. And there's a phenomenon they see. They can tell people, uh, respect them, and they want to reach that pinnacle. And back in the prehistoric time periods, there were myths that created were created because of these people that had anomalies. But today... That's what I was alluding to. Today, it becomes a social ideology that is lifted up. If you're like a freedom fighter or a social dogma propagator, then it's like, yeah, I want to be like them. It's like, you didn't need a superhero to do that. You just needed a brain to think. <laughs> you didn't. We don't have to glorify that kind of thing, but that's where we are today. So... I, I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. The next superhero is going to be Social Man, and yep. he, he's going to be out there fighting for, you know, identity equality. So um, there's a lot of stuff in this statement. I identify as a person that doesn't see a falling ball. And, you know, this is this kind of stuff that Matt Walsh would have a heyday on because he's going to say, well, what is that? What is a person? What is a ball? What is the I when you're saying I? Who is you? Like, what is a woman? That's what he asks. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's a statement. And it's a, you know, you can have a valid statement, but you still have to identify all these objects that you are saying. So you are, by saying the statement, in other words, you're saying there's an objective I, me, who's thinking. Shout out to Descartes. Um, and there's an objective thing called a person. And there's an objective thing called a ball. Of which you don't see. But there is an objective thing called a ball. You just don't see it. And you identify as this person. And you identify as you. You are identifying as a person that does not see a ball. So there's three things in the statement yeah, that see, are Yeah, but somebody's got an answer to that. 
It's called Bill Clinton. Yeah, I know. And that's good. That's a good. We could literally go down that trap, no, that rabbit trap. No, what he said was, you're going to ask me all those things, and I'm going to tell you this. Yeah, what is this? You have to tell me first. Identify. <laughs> I need you to define yeah. is. And that's okay. Once you define is, it's an objective identification. You can't. That's, I know. And that's where... The person knows they're being nonsensical. They're not being logical. They're going, and they don't live this way. It's fun to say and talk nonsensical. Like you can talk tree, moose, cow, shoe, mailman. But at the end of the day, it's not how the person lives. That's not how I live. I live in a logical sequence, sequence, sequence of events, if then uh, things. Like if I pour some coffee, I know I need a cup right there. So nobody's just living abstract they only talk abstract because they're trying to push an agenda so that's obvious well if it benefits you then we start playing with it more and i think this actually causes delusion yeah but you don't actually live it ever i think there are people who do and when you do this is what we call delusional no. they they only pick some parts of their life but notice but how right. oh, they don't they it's don't always the beneficial part notice of how they don't just start floating off into space they can't because they're still living in an objective world even though they're denying it they still have to work with gravity it's a real objective thing you can call it whatever you want, buoyancy or whatever, but there's a force that's pulling us. Shout out to Luke. There's a force that's pulling us to the earth. Well, because identity is not a phenomenon, identity is like an adjective. It's a description. I think that's why they play with it. And like that's okay. I, I identify because that's what identity is. That's identity okay. is a label. And I'm going to say, okay, what is that? And I hate to sound like Matt Walsh, I'm just gonna, but I have to. It's like, okay, well, what is that? If, they, if you say, I identify as Bangkok, like, okay, and what is that? Now, if you don't define it for me, then I know you're playing games. I know. And I'm going to say, can I follow you around with a camera and see if you actually live your whole life in this yeah, absurdity? But at some point, that of probably, course they don't. At some point, it probably falls apart because anything at a reductionist level falls apart. But most people, they don't probably get down to that very high, precise level. But I in just, the day-to-day -day life, that's what people do. They label, categorize. So, I mean, at some point, you just have to live in a categorized life. Yeah, I want to see you walk the talk. If you, and otherwise, I know you're just doing something. You're you're uh, trying to get me to buy something that you're selling, or otherwise, you're gonna walk the plank. I want to see you walk it. What's that music video? It's like, let me see a wow, wow, wow. Wow. Well, I think this is why those people who claim identities, they they try to partition the difference between sex and gender because they want to make gender an adjective and they want to make sex something that's quantifiable. That's cool. So as long as they identify, you can say sex is now identified as a car. And that's okay. I can work with that. I was well, like, okay, know, so every time you say sex, I want to see you actually mean a car. At some point, I do see that it's a tautology because if sex means male and female and gender means male and female, well, that means sex and gender is tautology. It's the same thing. So why have a redundancy? Redundancies are tautological. So if there is a thing called sex and it's only male and female, why do we have a redundancy called gender? Fine, sure. You can play whatever you want. I'm just going to play with you. I will literally play no, with no, you. No, no, I'm making the argument no. is, well, we should just get rid of one. Because it's, it's tautological. Okay. It's like if you're going to say... It's not going to happen. If gender is male and female... And if sex is male and female, and that's all they can be unless now we want to use gender as an adjective. It's not actually male and female. It's like you, you have to do something with it because it's a redundancy. Yeah, it's just you can try to get rid wow, of it. Wow, I think Noah Cloud put that sign. I love that sign. What sign? It's the processing sign. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that sign. It always makes me think something's glitching. <laughs> Yeah, we, it causes me to stop everything. I want to. Oh, it's like oh, something's wrong. <laughs> yeah, and we know you're joking, No Cloud. I, I don't. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah we know you're joking. Oh, it's I, just something yeah. for us to partition. That's all. Yeah, we probably attract a lot of cynical minds in this uh, in this whole show in this whole uh, toilet time itself. Probably attracts cynical minded people because you know, a lot of people. I get the same crap all the time. I'll say something and it looks like I'm serious in shorts in. Uh, in the uh, long episodes, no matter where. And people always give me, it's like, you know that's fake, or you know that's you know from the onion, or you know that's not real, or whatever. And it's like, I know, but they can't tell I'm being cynical. I'm a very cynical person. And I just don't care, unfortunately, enough to say anything about it. But, yeah, I, I know you're joking. I know. <laughs> uh, 
And I also know that you're quoting, like you're playing the hypothetical, and I'm playing the hypothetical with you. We both are, so well, I'm and don't think that we think that you're being serious. We know you're joking. I don't really, as much as it seems like, I have a lot of facts, I have a lot of knowledge, but I don't actually care. And I know that's probably really hard to process for a lot of people, but my knowledge doesn't dictate my belief. And so I w- that's why I encourage people the same. Talk about everything. Who cares? Because uh, just because you have a lot of knowledge doesn't mean you're going to believe it all, and nor do you have to. Because the more options you have in knowledge sets, you realize you're not isolated to a dogma. So, yeah, I don't care. A lot of things I say, I mean, you only could imagine. You don't even know the half of how much I don't care when it comes to those things. But I'd love to talk about it. Uh, but it, it's not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah. And I, I care so much that you can only know the half of how much I care. But there are things I care about, so don't put it like that. It's like I'm not, I'm not a nihilist where nothing's pointless. Everything's pointless. There's no purpose. I'm not a nihilist. But, uh, but I am a care bear. But I don't believe that dogma should rule your life. Dogmaticos. No, Cloud says, I bet a Jedi could run through a table. I know they could. I don't know. I mean, Yoda has been living for a billion trillion years, <laughs> and then he finally died. I think... <laughs> I think better than a Jedi. I think Chuck Norris could run through a table. That guy can do anything. No, the table's actually going to disappear when he hears that Chuck Norris is coming. <laughs> the table's going to try to run through him. Yeah. It's going well, to run through space time. <laughs> it's going to get. It's going to find a wormhole. <laughs> it's going to get roundhouse. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Smith says, even if you jump through it from the top of the cage, it's still a table. Yeah, phenomenon's phenomenon. Yeah, like and I see, say, if people argue about phenomenon, there's words for that. See, and I, I just have to ask. You know, when I don't understand something, I just ask. Well, what do you mean by cage? What do you mean by table? Because these are all debatable things. Now, if I'm standing there with you and you're touching the thing and you're saying, "I can run through this right here," then I'm going to say, "Do it as fast as you can. Go." Well, I don't think. Again, I don't think people have to argue. But like I say, there's names for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there's real names for yeah. stuff like that when you and argue about phenomenon. Yeah, and it, that's cool. Like, if you want to talk nonsense, uh, I'm not saying anybody on here is doing that. I'm saying the people that are talking nonsense out there that we know of in those communities, they could literally start talking backwards. Like, again, they could start saying fly bird, blue moon shoe. And I, I'm just going to start asking, okay, well, you'll need to, so we can have a conversation and pass information from one person to the other. Assuming that's what we're about to do. You want to tell me information and teach me. And I want to tell you information and teach you. That's how human dialogue works. Um, so I need to define these words. What does shoe mean? What does bird mean? What does moon mean? What does blue mean? And then once you tell me. So bird means dog. Moon means the. Shoe means ran. And uh, cow means away. So now I know. Okay, cool. So now I can talk with you. So now every time you say any of these words, I'll know you're saying the dog ran away by saying blue moon cow shoe or whatever. And I'll know. But, like, I, but I, you need to define those things. I will say, because this is tough, <laughs> and I think we need to get off this because we're going to circle, but <laughs> yeah. infer- knowledge is not mutually exclusive. Like, there are some phenomenons that cannot be proven, but it's real, but it's not universal, so it's not mutually exclusive. Like, there are people who say they seen UFOs. I've never seen one. Now, they saw a phenomenon, and there's multiple people who've seen that phenomenon. And so this is difficult because that's like a table, and they say they've seen it. They can describe it. They can tell you what it is. They've experienced maybe an abduction, but I have never experienced that. And so this is where it gets difficult. Now it feels like this weird barrier, like dementia or something. It's like you see something, I see something. Who's really seeing something here? And there's it's a many different th- scenario. No, but I'm saying there are many layers to this where people say all kinds of things, and I was like, there's no explanation except for the internal so, experience. Yeah, that's easy to get. That's easy. But I'm saying it's so. What what's happening is they're saying, yeah, we have a rock from Pluto in our house, and everybody's saying that, and I don't have a rock from Pluto in my house. It's different than saying I have a table because everybody has a table or has been in contact with a table at least once in their life. So, in a, again, I, 
So there's a difference. There's something that everybody experiences. And then there's something that not everybody experiences. But the problem still remains. We don't know if it's true or not. No, we don't. But now if somebody tries to tell you the table that you have in your home is debatable whether it exists or not. Now everybody having a table in their home can go to the table in their home or go to a neighbor's home or go out into a a public restaurant. If you can't afford a table, go to a public restaurant and go to a table there and try the experiment. Say, okay, well, I don't believe this table exists and run as fast as you can through it. Prove it wrong. Well, that objective reality well, it's does deeper not than a exist. Table. What we're all saying is matter is real, and because matter, well, no, matters what, life. What you're re- saying matters. You, so you're saying you're trying to compare the two. Like I saw a UFO. It's like that's not the same. Because maybe they did, but no, we not everybody can have a UFO in their home. So we can't just go to our home or go to across the street to see if there's a UFO or not. These people are saying the UFO flew across the yeah, sky, but, never but to be see, seen again. Tables aren't, aren't universally exclusive either. You can go to an indigenous tribe and they'll have something else. It's not like your table. Sure. And then say tree. There's trees. Are, that's yeah. a better one. Tree. Say a tree. Now run as fast as you can to the tree. See, Everybody then, has a but tree then What you're them. saying is, is then experience determines the construct because those <laughs> people are experiencing UFOs and other people aren't. It's, it's not always mutually exclusive. What I'm saying is that there's still no, just because you don't experience something that somebody else does, that doesn't mean there's no such thing as No, like truth. them, they the, ran the into, they ran into a UFO. They, they ran into an alien. They touched that thing. They had this real um, yeah. probing how, experience. I cannot go to my room or my living room. I cannot, not everybody can just go touch an alien but to see a lot if of what things, they're saying though, There's a lot of things in life that we can't have mutually but exclusively. Syllogistically, this is an invalid argument if you're saying, well, there, that pr- disproves objective reality. I'm not saying it. I'm saying there is a phenomenon that you cannot quantify that can be just as real as a table. Those things can be just as real as a table, but Could it's... Be, but we can't prove it. But they... But, they're, but we can prove a table or a tree. You can prove those things, but you can't prove a, a UFO. It's true. Sure. Even if you experienced it with yourself. Well, actually, no. There's a way you can bypass that, too. If you isolate a human in a room and they've never seen a tree, then and you never allow them to see a tree, they, won't, okay. they won't believe in a tree. I'll tell them to walk through the wall. It doesn't matter where, where you go. Objective reality is everywhere. So I'll tell them, start floating. Or I'll tell them, you know, walk through that wall or whatever. Or I'll tell them, put your hand but through that's your what other I'm hand. You're just, arguing, I mean, you're just arguing about matter. Yeah, that, that's exactly. But matter is a subjective term, so I'd stay away from that. No, it's I'm not. just saying matter's object. Matter is not subjective. Okay. Green and blue. Nobody's green, arguing green. about matter. I will tell them, put your hand through your other hand. And if you can do that, then I'll believe you. And they're going to go, I'm going to say, no, jam it as fast as you can because you don't believe your hand exists, right? So just go right through it as fast as you can. Well, if you use your own proxy, which is you have to define it, then what's your hand? And eventually yeah, I'll, gonna, I'll touch their hand. No, like, what, you can call whatever no, you want. I'll put their hand like this. Your I'll proxy, put this hand like this. Proxy, I'll say, go as fast as you can. Your through. proxy was you have to define things. And so if somebody that's says, right. what I'll, is a hand? I'll be happy to define them. Yeah. It's this right here. I'll hold then, their hand up. All right, that's I'm a hand. I'm going to say, what is that? Yeah, cool. See, that's what it, I'm saying. This, this is a gluka gluk. At some point. And I'll tell them, this is a buka bok. That's all you're saying. And this is a buka buk. At some point, now, you're just saying it's matter. Yeah, and I'll say, kabucha kadikara, buka bok. And I'll tell them, and I'll do that, and they'll see by my gesture yeah. that you need to go as, as fast as you can. I'll show them, <clears throat> go as fast as you can through your hand, right through it. Prove to me it doesn't exist. If they're saying buka book, no exist, then I'll say buka book exist, and I'll tell them it doesn't matter. You, I'll play the word games with you. I'll play semantics, and that's. I will say most people don't want to do it. Matt Walsh does the same thing. Yeah, but He'll say what it doesn't is that? always work. No, it doesn't, and that's how you know the person's trying to sell you something. No, I'm that's saying I'm they're saying, trying to sell me something because they don't even believe this either. They're not living like that. They're walking. They're putting one foot I'm in front of the other. I'm saying definitions become tautological at some point if you get too reductionist and it doesn't work either. I, because without a category to de- identify the adjective or describe something, you can't have a premise of what you're actually talking about. People just say, "Well, you're talking about nothing." Okay. Well, have a nice day. It's that simple. Yeah. And I'm gonna watch them with a fine tooth comb. I, mean, I, I want to see you live your life. You're going to probably start walking backwards. You're going to talk backwards or, you know, whatever you, however you just expressed yourself to me. If you're going to walk the talk, I want to see you live in an abstract life. 
you know, instead of eating, maybe you're spitting food out or whatever you're doing. Maybe you're walking on your hands instead. Or Some people believe that. Live stuff. abstract, ac- abstractively. Some people do. They, they live what they're called. Uh, they do. Uh, what's it called? Uh, and that's good. Cosplay. Yeah, that's good. If you believe you're a dog or a horse or whatever. Yeah, what was those guys called? That's those, good. those pup people? Live that way. Yeah, human pups. Yeah. Live that way. And if you don't, some then them, I'll know. But some of them do. They made a documentary on it. So I, I talked <laughs> a long time ago, for example, with just as an example I'm going to bring religion into this real quick when I was an Uber driver I had this one guy telling me about Jesus a, a passenger when I was an Uber driver a passenger was telling me about his religious idea and I was like okay cool and I asked him okay well what do we do with all the contradictions in the Bible and, I'm, and I told him I'm not saying there are contradictions but I'm saying a lot of people say there are so what do we do if there are allegedly and he said well the Bible has a lot of contradictions, and there's nothing we could do about that. And I was like, okay, so why do you believe it? And he was like, well, I don't really believe it a whole lot because there are there's a lot of flaws and errors. And I was like, I, mean, I was like, okay, hold on, time out, time out. So you're trying to get me to believe in something that you yourself don't even believe. How does that add up? And that apparently, you know, that that was towards the end of the ride. He was like, um, I don't really know. I don't know. And I guess he never thought about that. And I don't, honestly, I try to relate. I don't relate with that. If I'm trying to tell somebody something that I believe, it's because I actually believe it. That's how I live my life. But I've come to realize not everybody does that. And I'm sure there's other areas in my life that I don't do that either. There's probably where places in my life that I'm not being consistent to my speech. So don't hear me saying I'm perfect or whatever. But I, I try at least, I do try. If somebody points out an inconsistency or hypocrisy, hypocrisy in my life, like you're saying one thing but you're doing another, if they point that out to me, I do my best to correct it or else I'd just get better at lying, I guess. But my aim is not to be that way. Now, if your aim is to be a hypocrite, then cool. But don't expect other people to buy what you're trying to sell them if you don't buy it yourself. And that's you know, that's my whole thing. Like that, If I could have that as my motto, that'd be it. Don't, don't try to sell something you don't believe yourself. Unless you're just trying to make money. If you're trying to make money, then sure, I guess it doesn't matter well, if you I believe it or not. I can say something there, but we got to move on. Yeah. All right. So, uh, let's see. Foxy says, I'm also talking about truth. What's really going on in the world? Conspiracies, et cetera. And when you're talking about uh, conspiracies, that's actually what probably most people, they're talking about epistemology. Like, what can I know and how can I know it? And that's always going to be limited to access and hierarchy. There's no way around that. If you're on the inner circle, you're going to know more. If you're on the outer circle, and it's class. Epistemology is, like, if you're not talking about personal experience, of course, that just has to do with resolution. The more you focus on something, you're going to analyze it, but you're going to lose a resolution on the outside world. If you zoom out, you know, bird view comparative to a microscopic view, you're going to have different forms of information. So it's high resolution, low resolution. That's personal. But if you're talking about uh, truth, yeah, it's like what most people are trying to find out is, am I being lied to? (laughs) And unfortunately, that's a derivative of class hierarchy. If you're on the inside circle, you're going to know more. And if you're on the outside circle, you're going to know less. And there's no way around that. And there's no way you can fix that either. If, you know, just picture a bullseye. If you're way out here... You don't have access to what's going on in here. And if the if these things are producing all information, uh, then you're just, you know how many layers that information got to before it got to you? It's a, te- it's a telephone problem. How many layers did it get to before it got to you? And so you're just left with the scraps. And so unfortunately, uh, with a class, le- a class organized hierarchy, epistemology is left to due diligence. you got to just do some searching and studying but then you're left with this other conspiracy how do i not know that the information is propagated to me by the authorities like the scientists how do i know they're not lying and they're a part of the inner circle or the bullseye you can't and then then some people say well i'm going to go become a scientist so i can find out the truth 
But then what they realize is there's hierarchies within hierarchies. Then you go become a scientist and you realize, well, there's this really exclusive elite facility in the Vatican and only like 10 people in the whole world can go there. <laughs> then you're like, how do I get there? And so there's this problem of authority and classes. And if you're not inside that inner class, epistemology on a global scale, it gets very difficult. I've always wondered why they don't make a superhero called Epistemo. Well, you know, back in the day, knowledge was probably shared a lot more freely. <laughs> they love debate, discord, and rhetoric. Nowadays, they're hiding everything, and they don't, they don't want a public form of discourse. Look, up in the sky. It's a pistol, It's man. a pistol, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a, like a Greek god. <laughs> yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Um, what else we got? Looking something up while I'm speaking. Uh, Bruce Howe says, did they answer the about the superhero question? It's myths. I think we did. If not, <laughs> if we didn't answer it to your satisfaction then yeah let us know yeah, your satisfaction is guaranteed so be sure to send it back yeah, in it's demonetized refund <laughs> <laughs> no i mean send it back to us in the chat and we can yeah. play we'll, with it a we'll little bit we'll send it back to you yeah like a volleyball bruce house also says always wondered if babies talk to ghost <laughs> i don't know i know some people say babies talk to god <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to some people, that's probably the same thing, uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I know I, I have a dog, and sometimes my dog seems like it sees things that I can't see, and I know that's a phenomenon I've seen, and many people have seen. They'll start barking at something in the closet or something, and I don't know what it is, and I'll go over there, and they'll still be barking at it, and there's nothing in the closet, so... I don't know. That's a strange phenomenon. That's happened multiple times. Um, yeah, I don't know if babies talk to ghosts or not. I've speculated if there's a such thing as ghosts. Uh, you know, there are. It would answer a lot of questions. Like, so there's some babies that, uh, for example, it seems like they've had a whole other life before this one, uh, which a lot of people. Um, explain as like why babies cry because they're actually being reincarnated into a newborn so they they cried because they're they're crying because they just got done dying as somebody else and it, through their death they come into a new life and therefore they are uh crying now i don't know because I, I i know too much about psychology to believe that that's legitimate but again you know what is psychology well, who knows yeah, I, I could be wrong all psychology of it, could be wrong psychology itself could all be debunked if we could prove a spiritual existence because yeah if there's real things out there that we can't see that is talking it's actually communicating and we can hear it oh yeah there's going to be a whole nother conception of knowledge and it's it's like google in your ear it's like <laughs> uh, you know yeah, psychology itself would be trash if we could prove a spiritual consciousness that could talk. Well, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was saying why babies cry and uh, why babies seem to have, have have had a past life. Like, I remember this one, this one story that really got me. This kid, uh, ever since he could start talking, he would talk about how he used to be an air pilot of this certain plane. Uh, his parents claim that they've never watched war movies or anything like that. Uh, this boy, though, would go into graphic detail about this war that he was in and how uh, he was in the Battle of Pearl Harbor, um, and he unfortunately lost his life as a fighter pilot. He, uh, he would talk about like what it was like flying the plane. He knew a lot of specs about the plane that not only should not kids know, but most adults don't even know. In fact, you'd have to be a pilot to know this stuff. So that was interesting to me. Um, and, you know, this made it on a documentary, and I saw it. So there's a lot of other weird instances like that. So <clears throat> I've always wondered if maybe the pilot was a ghost, and he talked to this boy telling him this stuff. Uh, but then that causes a lot of other questions. First, again, you have to believe in ghosts. You have to believe that we're going to live on this earth as a ghost after you die. That's, that's two things. Then thirdly, this ghost of a grown man is hanging out with a little boy. Why? Um, 
it would be a lot easier to just think of reincarnation, but I don't know, to each their own. I'm not saying I believe in reincarnation. That has a lot of its own problems and in, inconsistencies that uh, right at the start up. So, uh, anyway, yeah. I'm not against the idea, though. Uh, I just, if you believe in ghosts, you have to believe in a lot of other things because there's a lot of overlap between spiritual things. You know, there's people who believe in angels or uh, demons or, you know, whatever. And so once you give the identity that there's some kind of existence of conscious minds and then it can be embodied in some shape and reciprocate with us on this plane, you have to open the door to multiple facets of that idea. So as long as people are open to that construct, I think it's uh, it's a good thing to talk about because a lot of people believe it, but that's like the UFO stuff. There are some people who are adamant and say, I have experience of these things. And I can't deny it, and I'm not going to. I'm just like, hey, that's cool, man. I Whatever you experience, I'm going to believe you because I don't know if you're lying or not because that's something I, a lot of people say that. A lot of people say they had that experience, and I don't know. And I'm going to say I haven't, but you know what? I never talked to a ghost, but that doesn't mean that you haven't talked to a ghost. I'm going to let it be. Just like if somebody says they better got abducted by an alien, I'm going to say, hey, I ain't never been abducted by an alien, but hey, that's what happened to you. I'm going to say, okay, that's what it is. It's just one of those things. But if you believe it, you, have, you can't be isolated. That's a dogma. You have to be open to all the overlap. So if you believe in ghosts, then you have to also say, well, maybe there's angels, maybe there's demons, maybe there's whatever else people believe in that has this extra dimensional conversational ability. You just can't isolate it to ghosts if you're going to believe in something like that. Yeah, um, Slayers says, what's up? What's up? Sir Yogi. Sir Yogi. Yeah, have we I, had him on here? I don't before? know. I, I like that name, Sir Yogi. Yeah. Good day to you, sir. Yes. <laughs> uh, he says, what do you guys think about Jakob, a black <laughs> scientist who created the white race, and Jakob reincarnates from Moses to Jacob in the Bible? Yeah, I, I, I've, I heard of Jakob a long time ago. It was like 6,000 years ago. There's the, it's from the it's an Islamic thing. And they believe there was like the scientist 6,000 years ago. And he's supposed to be Jacob. I don't know if it was a reincarnation of Moses, but he's supposed to be Jacob. And he's supposed to have been able to create the white people. And that's why we have a derivative of Jacob's derivative, which tends to be this Israelite nation. Um, but what happens is that it gets constructed because, you know, Moses is pictured as a uh, as a darker individual but at some point there has to be a reason why this uh, disassociates the color and so you know it's almost like the book of mormon was that in the book of nephi somewhere it's talking about the lamanites or lamanites or something mm -hmm. and because they didn't obey god well, that's a lot more recent though, yeah no so. i'm saying it's the same kind of mythological story mm -hmm which is the punishment of disobedience is a color transition. and But the problem with this story is the opposite is the reality because all the African individuals are all dark colored, mm -hmm. which this is usually propagated within that kind of regime. They're darker complexion. So now the lighter complexion tends to be the demonization. So it's actually the opposite. Like Joseph Smith was white, so he demonized the dark people while these people were more darker complexion, so then the lighter-skinned individuals become demonized. Yeah. Well, if you believe anything in the Christian Bible or Judaic Bibles, uh, they did not believe in reincarnation at all. Nobody, uh, you can't mix the two. It's like oil and water. So reincarnation is a, an Asian religious perspective. And the Jews were so far away from Asia that, and we don't have any record of them going, especially in the Old Testament period, as they would call it. So uh, there's no way they knew about reincarnation. You can look it in their literature. They did not believe in reincarnation at all. Uh, some even speculate whether they believed in a an afterlife until the Hellenists came. Um, but yeah, and as far as you know, where white people come from, you know. The interesting Eridu Genesis, which I think goes back to the 23rd century B.C., uh, it talks about black-headed people, which means whoever wrote this was white. 
because they're talking about how black-headed people moved in, which uh, a lot well, of scholars believe is obeyed people. White, but whatever it means that they thought those people were darker than them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're called black-headed people. And then you see it again in the Babylonian literature of the Enuma Elish. You see reference to these black-headed people. Because uh, Eridug was at the bottom of Mesopotamia, so they're already low. And so it's dark. They're yeah. already kind of dark, but then there must have been some really dark people that showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying who came first, whites or blacks or Hispanics or Chinese or anything. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's literature that's more ancient than this Jacob story. Uh, yeah, I'm not which, sure where that came from, but I know it's in this. I don't, I don't even know if Islamic people hold it as like reality or truth, but I know it's almost like a. It's like a book of Enoch of sorts. It's like one of those stories that gets pawned around, and but I haven't heard a lot of like die-hard Muslims talk about their belief in Jacob as a real. It's almost like a book of Enoch kind of thing. It's like a it's a story that people say, and maybe you talk about it when there's too much dominancy of the white individual, so you want to say, "Well, mm-hmm. we are the one that created them." But well, and. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, you know, it's hard to trust the Quran when uh, all of the previous copies up to a certain point, the seven, I believe the seventh century AD, uh, all the previous copies and manuscripts were all destroyed by one emperor who created his own translation of it. And there's evidence that things were deleted and things were added in, but we don't know what things were deleted or added in because he destroyed all the previous copies. So it's it's an unfortunate thing like we could have actually had a good copy of the Quran uh, to reference but uh, you know, we don't know what was added in or anything I'll tell you anyway. one thing I wish we could ever see is that mile long basement of books at the bottom of the Vatican Man, we, I mean I'm sure there's some goodies down there I bet <laughs> I bet I'm sure a lot of children get to see the basements of the Vatican. Uh, yeah, no, you got to be sanctified. <laughs> Anyways, what else? You got to be Gregorian. Got? I don't want to get demonetized. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I mean, this whole uh, everything is so sensitive, uh, you know. And I just enjoy talking, expressive, let people <laughs> talk about whatever we want. But man, it's a freedom of speech. Yeah, but we're gonna get demonetized. <laughs> All right, Foxy says no one can perceive the fourth dimension. Apparently, he was twelve talking about it. Oh, yeah, I've seen, I haven't seen the video, I've, I've seen uh, little clips of what you're talking about. There's a little boy who was talking about the fourth dimension, and I guess he was 12, so that, that I, okay. And I think Alex Jones was like five. Yeah, he was three or five, I can't remember, we're going to have to find that again. Yeah, when he, he reached the edge of eternity. That's all right, maybe he has. I, I, all I say is, one thing I'll give Alex Jones, out of all the stuff he ever says, he, he said a lot of things that was real before they happened. So he saw something, too. So that's all I'll say. It's, he said a lot of crazy things, but he said a lot of things that's interesting that uh, he can connect the dots pretty well. Yeah. He connected my dots all a lot. Yeah. True UI, which I'm assuming stands for true ultra intelligence. Not, it's not artificial. It's not natural. It's ultra. He says hello. Uh, I could say it in like, uh, actually, never mind. Hello. Just say it in Yugoslavic. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he says, "What are we specifically talking about?" Well, uh, whatever you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, you can you can literally jump in with anything: yeah. politics, religion, philosophy, science. You can whatever. make something up. Yeah, make something up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Slayer says, "Got a big, uh, gotta be a trick." I could easily pull, put a drill through him. Oh, you're talking about the... Yeah, uh, that's, that's what I thought <laughs> when I saw that, but I was like, hey, whatever. It got put... Um, what, <laughs> whatever. It says I got... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd pay money to see you put a drill through him, honestly. Uh, I, I'd pay money to see it. I would. That's like one of those circus shows. It's like the Red Room. Yeah, I was like, wow, <laughs> that's legit. Uh, Rotten Soul says, did you see the video of... He actually says video, like there's O's on there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't you know. have to come back, uh, Rotten Soul. Well, what video? 
I, I don't. I'm not. That might be in reference to something else we we're talking about. Like, oh, well, let us ago. know, uh, Rotten Soul. What oh, the robot killing itself. Oh yeah, I, I actually have that. You know, every video that you see on our episodes, I make sure I download it. I have it, so they can't delete it off the archives and say it didn't exist. I actually have um, a server at the house that I keep all the videos, every single thing that's ever been propagated. I have physical hard copy so it's eight terabytes <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> and uh so yeah i actually have it i have that video i have actually uh agility robotics commercials all their build-up programs i follow up with a lot of robotics because i have this i have a different conspiracy about robotics which i'll probably talk about one day but anyways i, I have it uh i guess jeremy smith uh, came in a while ago. He said, "Oh, poo, I'm late," and I somehow I missed that. You're never late. Like, yeah. Everything is in present time in this <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, let's see. You're always on time. J.D. Richardson sends us a heart. Yeah. So uh, that remind me, what do you guys think about this absolutely stupid NPC live TikTok trend? Oh, thank you. Oh, Rose. <laughs> Rose. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yeah, I've seen those. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's like, yeah. what, in, what is that? <laughs> it's NPCs, and they're finally realizing. What in the world is that? You're starting to sound like Matt Walsh. <laughs> I actually just want to know. <laughs> yeah, so does he. He's like, what is that? I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> and you know i get it because that there's there's people on their banking like this one person i saw they 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 were saying they got like two or three thousand dollars a night and then next thing i know i saw like a whole bunch of people trying it and you know it's one thing for girls to do it because they're trying to sexualize and they're trying to monetize that sexualization and so it's fine i get it it's like uh secret sensitive only fans kind of thing fine whatever but then I saw men do it, and that's cringy. Then I saw an old man do it, and I was like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what are those? Yeah, I was about to say, what are those? Uh, what, so there's this one I saw. It was actually kind of cool. Uh, it was an African-American, and he was, a, he was playing the part in a, uh, a Grand Theft Auto. And this is his choice, not mine. I was just watching and he's I, he's probably making a lot of money out of that. He's he's acting like the character, like you, as if you're playing. It actually looks real too. Like he's in real life, but how he did it actually looks like he's actually really good at acting like the character, like moving just like the character and everything. Anyway, I thought it was, it was I, left me satisfied. So, Noah Cloud says I'm gonna start with the loading when I'm joking from now on. That's good. I like that. Thank you. I don't know if that's necessary. I I have a pretty good keen sense of awareness uh when it comes to when you're being cynical when most people are because i myself am cynical and i hope people don't take half the things actually i take about half the things i say is serious but the other half you throw in the uh delete bin okay splenda pappy burner account (laughs) says tttv chat is fire guns yes Fire on it. <laughs> Noah Cloud says one brain can't hold all the knowledge. Not yet. Not until... Because, you know, they figured out how to convert DNA into storage. Yeah, it's called Elon Musk. No, I'm talking about your actual DNA. They can convert it into storage. And they can... Um, a, fing, a, a, a penny size amount of DNA can hold eight terabytes and so they, they can actually convert. They've already done this. This is old. They figured out how to com- make your DNA store data. So once they figure out how to put a processing chip that can connect to the Internet and then download that and store that separate from your brain, like they'll have a separate hard drive that stores all that data, but it's just be a, an amalgamation of DNA, which are allocated just for storaging data. At that point, you could know everything. You guys look it up. There's mm-hmm. and it, there's a lot of companies. Microsoft, a lot of companies already have technology to convert DNA into like a like a USB drive. Literally, you can download real 
images, MP3s, anything onto DNA, store it, and then transfer that DNA and upload that to a computer. Well, yeah, people people uh, transfer DNA all the time. No, that's I'm how talking, they. I'm talking. That's how they make babies. I'm talking. Like you actually put store, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you transfer yeah. storage, yeah. the DNA packets, and uh, it, and then there's a product. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about real. Bi- well, how, I'm how talking are, about okay. binary data. Yeah. So how are they supposed to put the DNA in me? No, they use your existing DNA. Okay, and then they plug it back in somehow. No, how? they just have this technology to allocate. So I give them my DNA. No, 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 no. no. They have a way. It's just like these. Uh, what do you call the xenobots, where they can program cells to do certain things. They can allocate a certain DNA set, a log of DNA, and program them to be seg- uh, seg- segregated and then segment that just for allocating data. And then they can tap back into that and then that will feed. Now think about if that, that section of DNA can connect to a chip, like a Neuralink chip, and that Neuralink chip can connect to the internet then you have this connection between the internet, the processor chip, which is not your brain. So it's like a whole nother brain. It's an isolated brain. Because your brain's doing the same thing, but it's biological. You can have all this inside your brain. <laughs> <laughs> I already do. Yeah, it's real. You guys check it out. So what are we going to do when that happens? What If somebody well, can obtain I'm sure, it. you know, somewhere out there in China, somewhere, there's somebody out there yeah. that's probably so, walking around with this technology. Well, yeah, if somebody actually had all knowledge in their brain, what do we do with the paradox that, you know, when you think you're smart, you're actually stupid, and when you think you're stupid, it's because you're actually well, smart? look, knowledge is not causational, nor is knowledge comprehension. You can, like a c- calculator can give me correct information, but it doesn't comprehend anything. So just because you have all this knowledge, comprehension doesn't follow. Okay, so you'd need someone like Elon Musk to connect all your dots. Well, you would probably need a program to help you connect those dots. Because if if I downloaded uh, Drax Equation in my head, unless I know what that's for, it's just a bunch of goobly glob. Yeah, so Alex Alex Janes, he'll help you figure that out. Alex Jones <laughs> <laughs> threw me into the end of eternity here. <laughs> well, he he de- he just man that guy. <laughs> well, you got me. It's like, what are you talking about? We were talking about earlier how he helps us connect our dots. Yeah. Anyways, who cares next? <laughs> you guys check it out though; it's real. I did a yeah. video on it. You can actually go through our ar- archives. I already did a video talking about it once upon a time. Noah Cloud says, My native family says that babies and younger kids can see spirits. I think scientifically it can be explained by the novelty portion of your brain not being fully developed. Uh, maybe, yeah. I, like I say, when it comes to individual phenomenon, who am I to say you didn't experience X, Y, Z? Uh, I, well, each to their own. But to say that it's a universal available tenant, like we all are seeing ghosts or we're all going to hear some voice or something or we're all, every human being, well, that's just not real. It'd be, then we can have a universal theory. We can ex, we have a phenomenon that everybody agrees to, and now we're going to have an explanation to that phenomenon. And science will have to address that because everybody is having that phenomenon. And the reason why science doesn't address these spiritual it, phenomenons is because everybody doesn't. So they're left with well, there's just no explanation that everybody will accept because everybody doesn't have it so i'm not going to deny it's real and they happen i'm just going to say that's not something that we can force everybody to accept because it's not really everybody doesn't have that experience yeah kids and babies do a lot of things for attention especially if you give them affirmation and reinforcements for that action that they're doing so if they say i see santa claus coming down the chimney right now and if you just ignore them, then they may actually stop. They may try something else. Uh, but if you endorse it and you start saying, wow, really, little Billy? You see Santa Claus coming down that chimney, do you? And you start egging it on, then he's going to say, yeah. And he's wearing a red coat and he's going to do. He's literally going to create. You are going to help them create this imaginary friend. Now, this is so primitive. It happens to animals. Yeah. Like if an animal runs into a door, like a glass door that they have 
you can watch a YouTube video on this and it gets scared and then you go give it positive affirmation while it's scared it's going to keep on seeking your comfort of positive affirmation so it's going to start getting scared of that glass door because it's expecting you to come back and give it more comfort because you affirmed it while it had a negative result but you gave it positive affirmation for acting in a negative mm -hmm. result so this is animalistic this is a bottom level but i'm not going to say that's what ghosts are because maybe ghosts are real yeah but yeah we we just can't it's not we can't make it a dogma everybody must believe it because it's just it doesn't happen for everybody yeah and you know with instances like that boy that i was telling you guys about there's many many examples of this you can look it up that boy that one instance i was talking about where that boy was who was claiming that he was a a, a, a pilot in world war ii and all that or uh yeah i can't remember which war he was in Is it war? no he was in uh, Pearl Harbor. Uh, he actually was claiming he was a fighter pilot, and he died in a plane crash. <clears throat> his parents... Now, I heard the psychologist was asking his parents, "Have has you guys ever watched war pictures in front of him? And they said no. But they could have been lying. But the way that the, the documentaries produce and the way that our brains naturally work, we want to believe the illusion. That's why we go see magic shows. It's entertaining. We like to believe... We like to be fooled. It's entertaining. We don't want to know how it's done. I mean, we do want to know how it's done until we know. And it's like, oh, well, that's boring now. Now I can, you just ruined it for me, you know. So the magician is never supposed to reveal his magic. Anyway, the parents, maybe they just don't remember. Or maybe they purposely lied so they could get paid to be on this television show. But nobody ever thinks about that. Nobody wants to know, really, truly know how the magic trick is done. They want to buy the deception. We all do it. My brain went there, too. I was like, wow, maybe it's real. The parents claimed it. So I just have to believe they would never lie. They've never lied before. I know them because I've seen them on TV. Now I know that they never told me a lie. So, I, yeah, of course. Anyway, so it's just that stuff. I don't know. But yeah, there is a lot of implications, though. If you think that children could uh, see spirits, uh, there's a lot that goes with that. Like, uh, how, come, how come spirits only reveal themselves to kids? Or how come kids only see spirits? Like, does that mean that kids are innocent and humans are not? And at what age do we become not innocent? Because if we can somehow achieve childhood, we can start seeing spirits again. If I could see spirits tonight by just achieving a, an innocence of a child somehow, why wouldn't I do it? I could probably make a lot of money off that. Spirits could literally go into the White House for me and tell me what's going on in the White House right now. And I can start giving you, like, unadulterated... Uh, prophecies almost <laughs> anyway so it's yeah I don't know there's a lot to consider we can go more into it if you guys want to just talk about it in the chat I'm going to keep moving on though uh, Slayers says did you guys see the sound of freedom I haven't I know a lot of people have and I still think it's strange that people have an antithesis to the concept and I'm still hearing people talking about QAnon and all this jive and you know I'm going to be real. I don't even know what this is. What, what, can, can somebody in the chat tell me what is QAnon? I haven't even looked it up yet. And I'm like, I don't even care. I don't care if it's Xeonon or whatever. It's just whatever. I don't care. If it's talking about sex trafficking or whatever and it's trying to say we're not for that, it's great, it's good. I may never go watch it. I don't watch a lot of movies. I, it's probably been a year and a half, maybe two years since I've been to a movie theater. So I'm probably, it's not going to probably happen. But that doesn't mean I can't support the idea that's behind it, which is, hey, we should be against sex trafficking. We should be against sexualization of children of any kind. Uh, I'm, a, I'm for that. And so whatever. I don't care who makes it. I don't care if Bill Clinton, as much as he's probably an Epsteinian, if he made a movie that helps propagate the idea that sex trafficking is bad, I would support that too. I absolutely don't care. The individual doesn't represent the ideology that's servicing the premise. So, you know, your worst enemy could say something that doesn't make it bad. The, 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 the premise is the premise. And I'm not so stupid I can't partition a premise from a dogma. I think Michael Knowles actually said the same thing. He's like, uh, nobody's talking about QAnon except for CNN and all these other... Uh, governmental conspiracy theorists are trying to claim that 
if you like the show, the movie, Sound of Freedom, then you are a QAnon. And nobody even knows what that means. So Michael Knowles had to actually try to figure out what this means. And he had to piece apart other things that they've connected to QAnon. And, uh... Well, I'm just we're glad still, I Nobody saw. knows except those people claiming the word. Like, they're actually the only ones saying the word. Well, that guy, that I think means. he's a Republican or conservative. I'm <clears> glad <throat> I saw some liberal and Democratic individuals saying the same thing. Because this is when I was like, who cares? I honestly don't even care. And that's why I think it could be hypocritical. If these conservatives, like Knowles or whoever, and Bill Clinton made a movie about anti-sex trafficking, I think they would bring out Epstein and all that and de do the same stupid demonization. That's why I think this whole thing is stupid. I don't care if you're a conservative, Republican, a Democrat, a liberal. Ideology should be partitioned from the idea of your political agenda. I feel like, though, if Michael Knowles and, you know, uh, Ben Shapiro and all them started claiming that what CNN said was... Oh, they're saying that because it's they're they're part of the Bushkinok conspiracies, it and they just keep on propagating. So now everybody's saying, yeah, CNN, yeah, they're with the Bushkinok people, and nobody even knows what that means. Even CNN, they're like, who? It's like, but well, it's too late. The propaganda's out. Everybody's gonna just keep saying, it's like, oh, you know who we're talking about? CNN, you're part of the Bushkinoks. It's like, okay, That's you know, you know what that is. I it's just, like, yeah, I'm right. Just I just it doesn't to me it doesn't matter. That's why I can't stand any talking head cuz they're 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 paid. You know, literally that's their job. They are paid. And they're going to continue feeding their echo chamber whatever they want. So the conservatives have their echo chamber like Shapiro and Walsh and all those guys and they're going to keep feeding their echo chamber and then you got the liberals and the democrats with their echo chamber with you know whoever. <laughs> and they're going to do the same thing. That's why I say who cares? Honestly, who even cares? They're all just talking heads getting paid to do whatever. So individuals need to think, what is the surface premise behind something? And that's it. And I don't have to go support the movie to say I support the agenda. I want I want the sexualization of children to be illegal, to be wrong, to be punished. That's a personal want. Now, there's people out there with proclivities, and they have that. But I, I don't I, I think that's predatory. And I, I, I'm will say I don't like that, but hey, as an individual that's a free human being, everybody takes risk and chance in their life, and if that's their provocative, hey, whatever. But I, I don't want that. I don't want people. It's almost like seeing a little baby animal, and then you see this massive lion coming in and just devouring it. I know that's the animal cycle, but it doesn't make me feel good. I don't like watching that, but I know that's what happens. And it's the same thing. When these, these grown men are trying to sexualize these children, it's the same thing. If you want to be a predator and be predatory, that's your provocative, but I ain't about that. I don't like that, and I don't want to see that, and I don't want to hear it because it's predatory. You're, you're taking somebody who's vulnerable, and you're, you know they're vulnerable, and then you take advantage of their vulnerability. And if you want to be predatory, well, stand up. And that's why it's called predator, sexual predators. Well, here soon, I think anybody who does not agree with the MAP agenda, minor attractive persons, they're probably going to be called QAnon. Whatever that means, nobody's still going to know what that means. Like, you're just going to be given this label, QAnon. It's like, we still don't know what that is, but we're all labeled that now because we're not MAP people. And if you're not for them, then you're against them. They made that very clear, too. You can't you can't take a neutral. Yeah, they're going to be connected with this identity. At yeah. some point, they're going to claim it as an identity. Yeah, unfortunately, nowadays you can't take a neutral ground on this stuff. Like you're either a hundred percent or you're a hundred percent against it. Like, hundred percent on, hundred percent off. It's almost religious. Well, it is religious. It's like you're either a hundred percent for us or you're a hundred percent against us. And I don't understand that. It's like that's not really fair, but it's whatever. Because like, it's people like me. It's like I don't care. You can be an MAP. You can do whatever you want, but. They're going to say, well, no, you do care because you're not an MAP yourself. So that means you must be against us. It's like, no, I'm not, man. Just saying, look, if you want to be whatever you want to be, if you want to be a couch or a dog or whatever you want to be, just be yeah, it. See, it's a tough situation because, you know, I have a personal I – don't, I don't like to be dogmatic of my expression, my personal opinion externally because I do believe every person should be free to do whatever they want. I really believe that in my heart. But, yeah, there's this humanistic idea in my mind that says there's something wrong 
And I can't justify it, you know, some kind of philosophical, em empirical justification. You have to say there's something intuitive or innate about this by saying it's wrong. Because we can argue what's right and wrong, and then we can redux it, reduce it down to a level where it's basically the same thing as a lot of things. And then it's like, well, then there's no argument. And I get that. But there's something inside that says predatory action is, I don't like it. So I call it wrong. But it's difficult because you don't want to project that because one day somebody else is going to say what they don't like. They're going to say, I do it, and they're going to say, I'm wrong. And this is why the First Amendment is so important. You have to promote the things that you hate because one day the thing that you love, somebody else is going to hate. And then they're going to say, I don't want you to say that. And you're going to be on the other side of the fence. And so it's very difficult because freedom has to be neutral, even though there's an intuitive bias. And I think that's hard, but I think it's good practice. I think every human should practice it. You got to hear the things you hate and you got to learn how to process it because if not, you're going to be on the other side of the fence one day. And if, that, if that's the case, then there is no freedom. It's just authoritarianism. You're just waiting for the next dictator to come, and hopefully it's yours. Because if it's not, you're going to become the slave. And that, that's not the kind of world I want to live in. But you have to somehow process the things you hate to deal with that freedom. There's, there's no other way. So I think it's healthy. It's healthy we hear things we don't like and figure out how to process it. No Cloud says, like seeing fractal patterns when you eat mushrooms or acid. <laughs> I've wondered if, I, I've w often wondered if that's what reality looks like and our brains filter it out to be cohesive. Well, there are many uh, studies that show our brains only operate on single resolutional uh, processes. When you look at something in like a microscopic viewpoint, you're, you have to be oblivious of the bird eye spectrum of reality. If you're looking at a microscope, a microscope and you're looking at a bacteria or amoeba or something, you are not focusing out here where all the people are. The people disappear because all you can see is just a bacteria. So all this data is still going on. All this stuff is going, air is still flowing, people are still moving, but you don't see them. You don't know what they're doing. Because the only thing you can see is this bacteria, this amoeba. And so, the, but the same thing, when you back out, you'll never see the amoeba. So we only can have single forms of resolution if we want to know something in truth, like as accurate as possible, being precise. And so, yeah, there's probably some kind of weird framework that our brain sees because when we're out here, we see all kinds of things. Some things are detailed, some things are not. And we're, it's all because of our what we're giving attention to, but... Yeah, I don't know if it's all like geogra uh, geometrical, like some kind of weird geometrical shape. But, you know, when they make sounds, sounds make geometrical, it's called cymatics. They make geometrical shapes, so maybe everything is just a frequency. Everything's geometrical, like a fractal shape. And our, bra our brains are generalizing shapes into icons so we can process them and categorize them more simply. But really, we're just seeing frequencies and somatical shapes. And everything is a social construct but if that's the case then we're back to what is real we don't know what real is anymore we're just gonna call it a frequency <laughs> and I, I don't i don't know if anybody's gonna agree with that what else we got? <laughs> um jim jackpot says the highest level you can touch is not knowing that's a, that's that's a deep statement if you're, if you're really thinking about it <laughs> well, yeah i mean <clears throat> yeah the first question i want to ask is how could you know if you haven't had all knowledge because maybe you know it's like saying the most well, pre-assumption yeah i know i get that because yeah, we just have to say that yeah I know. you haven't looked under every rock <laughs> yeah and this is this is uh you don't want to get dogmatic here <laughs> <laughs> Well, just playing with the uh, the thought. Uh, Not saying what you're saying is wrong. I'm just saying no, I'm maybe just it's trying true, to be, maybe I'm trying it's trying to be neutral just thinking. It's like yeah. curiosity kills the cat, which means we have an intuitive desire yeah. for the unknown. And, curiosity kills everything. And we draw to the unknown because of that. So, yeah, it, it, it's a deep thing if you think about it. The unknown. What else we got? Uh, Jim Jackman says, we all want to flush. Let's keep smiling. Yeah, flush that thing. Hit that like button. Yeah, and do clarify, 
if you have some more thoughts on the highest level what would be the highest level let me throw that plug question. out there i feel like one of those telemarketers if you haven't thought about joining the toilet timers <laughs> membership think about joining our membership there's a join button at the bottom of our video uh for 4.99 you can help our channel continue to monetize as we continue getting demonetized every day (laughs) (laughs) and hit that like button and just throwing it out there yeah so tell us what the highest level that you can touch is jam jackpot i'm curious <clears throat> Got to keep an eye on this one. Mm-hmm. Jim Jackpa, he's always throwing those curveballs. What else we got? Bruce House says, why is it human nature to want to pass responsibility off to another person? We could govern ourselves if not for laziness, I think. It's because of energy. I've talked about this before. Um, actually, I talk about it. It's almost like every life somebody asks this question just in different ways. It's like the same question, why does everybody see problems? It's because it's low energy. It's always easy to find what everybody suffers at. The hard part is actually doing something about it. Solutions, this is why, as unfair as it seems, this is why problem solvers get paid the money. CEOs are basically just good problem solvers. They know the right people to put in the right place. They see the patterns before they happen so they can predict the future of the company or whatever. Solutions are hard to come to. It's easy to say, hey, there's some trash over there. Go pick it up. Or, hey, there's this over here. But who's coming to the solution? So the reason why we want to delegate our responsibility because it's low energy. I don't have to do anything. That guy's going to do it. I don't have to worry about that. That government's going to do it. I don't have to get a job because this UBI is going to pay for it. Everything is low energy. And our brain is always going to fight for the lowest amount of energy and the highest return. And unfortunately, that's just humans. And you're never going to get rid of that. This is why we like junk food. We like it. Even though we know it's probably not good for us, we like it because it's a shortcut. It's fast. It's easy. I don't have to cook. And it's cheap. So you know what? I'm buying potato chips. I'm buying junk food. It's low energy, and it has a gratifying reward. We do, however, want to take responsibility if it's a good thing. It's only things that are going to yeah, cost that, energy true. or We get pain. some praise or some kind yeah. of payment, then, yeah, we'll take it. And yeah. we'll even steal it. We, we might steal it from somebody. Yeah. Uh, Rotten Soul says, like the video and join the Discord. Yeah. Amen, brother. And think about joining toilet timers. Yeah. Bruce House, uh, I think he's clarifying the last when... Uh, where was that? Always wondered if babies talk to ghosts. Um, so he clarifies. He says, not talking about that. Just a baby under two years old playing with things that you can't see or talking and laughing with something that you can't see. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, if babies under two years old, let's say, let's say two years old and under can see ghosts, but then two years old and up, or three-year-olds and up cannot see ghosts. It begs the question. How can I get to a two-year-old mind state so I can also see ghosts again? Because think about the world of possibilities if you could actually see the unseen. Because if, if ghosts are real, that means they're literally living all around us. We just can't see them. With our five senses, we can't experience them. But that doesn't mean it's not there. There's a lot of things that you can't see with your five senses, like chemical gases and stuff until it kills you. You can't smell it, can't taste it, can't uh, see it, can't feel it, nothing. Can't hear it, but... All of a sudden, you just drop dead. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of things, of course, that you can't. Well, experience. the children themselves are different, you know. And when they're a little baby, they have this thing called um, image imper- impermanence. You know, when you do this and you do this, a baby to them, it's like you just left. It's called image impermanence. Their brain still isn't developed because they're learning. This is optimal for learning. This is why children can learn so fast. And it takes adults so long because we're permanent. We start have permanizing or categorizing and giving rational reasons why those categories should not change. And so it gets difficult for us to change our mind. It gets difficult for adults to say, well, okay. But a child, they have so much impermanence and their brain is so placid that a, an adult can say, well, that's wrong. Do this. And they're like, okay, that's wrong. Do this. Okay. And they're just learning. They're just gobbling that up. And because of that, who knows what they're seeing? 
who absolutely knows what they're seeing because they their brain is just designed in a way for imagination to be so interwoven in their learning process that they maybe they see weird stuff that adults just don't and and it's good that adults don't because we need categories we need some permanence we need logic and rationality that doesn't change but if you want to maximize learning get rid of that stuff this way you can learn a language this way you can learn uh who knows what they can learn anything because their brain is so placid they're absorbing they're not questioning they're just absorbing yeah and again it, it there's a lot of implicative things with this too like why can two-year-olds see ghosts but a three-year-old can't assuming let's just say it's five years old it doesn't matter where you put the stake at why do ghosts not show up to eight-year-olds anymore why they only why they stop at seven years old or whatever yeah, and if we determine it's, it's because like, of brain plasticity then you're gonna then you have to equate it some kind of hallucination or yeah. some kind of some something that's dealt with the brain's construction for learning at a, such a young age because then it dissipates at some point unless there's a mysterious axioms that somehow these entities know oh they're at that age yeah and now i have to not do this anymore yeah i know it's weird yeah not only that then there's a different question which is if that's the case why do adults sometimes see ghosts but well, uh, yeah you, if you bl- if you blend it with plasticity maybe but then it's like well, you're saying the adult has like a childlike brain. <laughs> yeah, that's what you would have to conclude if you correlated with plasticity, right? Yeah, maybe, but then cameras see ghosts. Uh, yeah, so what do you do with yeah, that? Yeah, it's like yeah. cameras don't have any brains, just showing you what what yeah. is seen. Yeah. And now you, as a thinking intellectual adult who does not have a childlike brain, can now see a ghost or some kind of apparatus mm-hmm. forming on a screen. So, I don't know. There's just a lot of questions. I've always wondered. You know, if if children can see ghosts and play with ghosts and laugh with ghosts or whatever, why? Like, again, there has to be some kind of... Or maybe there doesn't have to be. And if there doesn't, then yeah, ghosts could just literally start doing whatever they want. But there seems to be some weird rules. If ghosts are real, there seems to be some kind of weird rules that govern them. That they obviously cannot break these rules. It's either the children, it's either the people have the rules... Or the ghosts have the rules. One of the two. But no, something is stopping no, no, no. this communication. No, I'm saying why can't ghosts just start killing all human beings? They could. And people could say, well, maybe they're Casper-friendly ghosts. Uh, you know, maybe, sure. But then why? So ghosts have to be friendly then. Yeah, but then there's some people who have videos where ghosts yeah. pull them all over the place, throw them somewhere, hurt them. That's what I'm saying. So, and not only that, it usually it no, usually doesn't kill them. You only see ghosts killing people in horror movies. Maybe that combustible stuff where people combust, maybe that's a ghost. Yeah, maybe, but those people usually smoke too, so. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to feed the idea. I'm just saying there's a lot of unanswered questions. <laughs> there is a there is an axiom, though, that ghosts apparently live by rules. They don't just do anything they want. They have to live by a set of rules. And that begs a question, who made these rules? Because whoever made these rules are superior to these ghosts. That's a weird thing to think about. Well, they may be dimensionally bi- isolated, just like us. There's rules like humans can't fly, but that's based upon yeah. our dimensional limitation. Yeah. So maybe if you go to a higher dimension, sure. they have different limitations. That means that there's a higher dimension than the ghosts will leave realm. Sure, sure, sure. That means, again, if there's rules that sure. you live by. That means there's a higher dimension of living. Now again, well, it can cap at some point, but yeah, we don't know where that cap is. What I've what I've always found interesting, um, and I may have talked about this like uh, maybe on our first or second live, but I'll bring it up now. I guess we. Oh wow. Yeah, we have about six minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I guess very briefly, I find it interesting. I find it interesting that. Um, uh, hold on. I find it very interesting that uh, no matter all the videos you look at on YouTube or anywhere you go for ghost videos, they all do the same thing. Now, maybe it's all fake or maybe it's all real or maybe half is fake, half is real. But I've always found it interesting that either way, all these videos, the ghosts always behave the same way. They're always peeking around corners and then they, they you know, duck under cover. And whenever people go and try to look at them, they're, they disappear. Now, whether it's real or fake, I don't know. But every single ghost video does this. Ghosts apparently don't want to be seen by cameras. So they always move very quickly across a hallway. 
or uh, they're always hiding in the shadows. Nobody ever talks about this stuff. Why are ghosts hiding in shadows to be unseen? So it seems like there's this rule in which uh, ghosts are not allowed to be seen and by a humans. So somebody wrote this rule, or at least maybe somebody didn't write it. Well, I guess so, something had to create this rule that ghosts are not allowed to be seen by humans or else something bad happens. So ghosts have fear. And if ghosts violate these, which sometimes they do, what happens? And it's just a lot of interesting stuff. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the next four minutes. <laughs> well, just run through it. I just let's just run through the question. Well, that's everything I think. Wait, hold on. There's one more. Uh, Bruce House says, "Are there benefits to rescinding your birth certificate?" <laughs> Talking about like a state, a state national. Uh, I, I'm sure there's pros and cons to everything. I. I guess you just need to clarify. Are you talking about like a state national? Are there benefits to filing? Now, you know, if you, I'll tell you one thing. It's not beneficial if you live in another country. I've heard people say, I'm going to move to another country and renounce my citizenship as a United States citizen. And I'm going to live in this other country like uh, Honduras or something. That's dumb. You have all kinds of interesting tax benefits. It, even though America's strange, if you live in another country, they can still tax you in another country, even though you're not in America. But there's, all, there's two forms of tax itemization. So basically, you won't pay tax. But because you keep your citizenship, you'll still be allowed to come back to America anytime you want. Let's say you change your mind. And you'll still get all the benefits like Social Security. All the health care benefits. Well, there's not a lot of that, but you still get Social Security. If you have retirement, any kind of pensions, they still will be all allocated to you as a United States citizen. And you can still live in another country without renouncing your citizenship. So I will say one thing is you can go to another country and not pay taxes legally because there's... Itemization up to one hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah, if you make over one hundred and twenty thousand, then uh, <laughs> at that point it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you're really asking about. Uh, <laughs> the benefits was filing through TurboTax. <laughs> <laughs> Is that somebody said that? No, I was just. Oh. Yeah, I was just. Uh, yeah, never mind. I'm sure there's a reason for everything. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Noah Cloud is right, everyone. There are benefits to being a toilet timer. Yeah. If you guys want to be a part of the toilet timers, do so. It helps us out. <laughs> but, um, yeah. What in the world? There's like a little tiny icon that says hello, but it's, it's too tiny for the... Well, if you're a toilet timer, there are special icons you'll get. <laughs> You'll get these emojis, these toilet emojis that uh, I made that uh, you can use. Uh, you'll also be recognized. <laughs> it feels so stupid having to try to sell toilet timer membership. <laughs> Anyways, I, uh, I, I am honored that anybody would even consider it. But, yeah, consider doing it. It helps us. This video is already, I know, going to get demonetized. The last one got demonetized. Actually, 80% of our videos do, but we don't really care. Uh, we're putting it out there. We enjoy the conversation. We enjoy putting out this information so it gives people something to conversate about, community to circulate around good conversation. So it's cool. But, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate anybody who's joined the Toilet Timers. It's definitely, it's more of a... It's more appreciative than anything, you know. So it's because it's interesting that anybody actually even cares. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, literally, uh, it is a rebel for a cause. I think. I mean, like, <clears throat> I, I don't. Yeah, it's it's not for the faint of heart. Like, you can't be a square and join the membership. Yeah, so I, all hearts to you, Noah Cloud. I don't I think know. We have a couple others too. I can't. It doesn't look like they're here today. Too. I don't know. Uh, what happened either mr house but uh you know we can continue the ghost convo next week or whatever else we usually don't what well, if so our plan is if nobody's talking about anything and it's just quiet 
that's when we'll go into the Discord. But usually you guys are fully active, and like today's episode, you guys are active, asking questions and stuff. So we're talking about what you guys, we try to be interactive with you. Yeah, and if nobody talks even after that, there's always things I'm going to talk about. Like I was going to bring up BRICS Nation, uh, the 40 nations that are going to sign up. Is there really a fundamental chance of a de-dollarization, which I'll say no, not for at least five to seven years, <laughs> 2030. Uh, but the implementations and infrastructures are being set like a distributed ledger system on the IMF level. What is the BIS? Stuff like I had things I, you know, I'll talk about that uh, if nobody wants to talk about anything. But you guys always have questions, and I prefer that to scratch your guys' mind and you guys scratch my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I scratch your face, you scratch mine. Yeah, that's it's that's that's what we like. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. But, you know, this is, uh, we try to keep it live and active because if you guys wanted to just come in here and hear us talk about stuff, then uh, not even acknowledge you guys, and you guys just watch our pre recorded. But this is a time when you guys could talk about whatever you want. You won't get judged for nothing. Uh, I mean, you may get made fun of a little bit, but hey, it's all for fun. And you guys probably make fun of us too behind your computer screen. And I like it. It's freedom of speech. It's what America was founded if on. If you guys ain't making fun of us, I'm surprised. Yeah, <laughs> We are the epitome of things that should be made fun of. That's what I'm saying. We're literally like the rejects. That's like People like Noah Cloud and our other members are literally rejects. They're like the rejects of society. We're actually pushing things it, without pushing anything. We're actually pushing everything without pushing anything. And that, that itself, don't even try to wrap your mind around. It's too smart for me. No, Mr. House, it's not for a throwaway. Actually, the anticipation is for evidences and other points of uh, buildup. You know, because a lot of things we talk about, there's not a lot of places where people can go find all this information or sometimes it gets deleted. So the idea was that it could be a place where people could go to say, oh, I want to find out what they're talking about with this. Or other people contribute. It's like, oh, what is... Uh, this government conspiracy bell or what is this new technology about or uh, what are false flags or you know what is uh you know epistemology ontology tautology whatever um so that's actually what it's supposed to be a place where people could get together talk about the central theme of just open-minded conversation at the same time there'd be a place where there could be sub threads of information so people could find out more information now, I'll admit, uh, I haven't been in there that much as I was when I first created it. So, Well, I go in there quite a bit, but not a lot of people put a lot of stuff in there. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen your stuff. I've seen other people's stuff. But uh, that's about it. Like, there's not a whole lot of conversation. So, and I'm not saying you guys should, like, be more active because, I mean, I could probably go in there and be a lot more active, too. But um, I usually just go in there to see what you guys are saying. I talk enough on here, uh, but it's it's a lot more rare to hear what you guys want to say. So uh, maybe maybe we can uh, seg uh, uh, put it, do a segment, like maybe a 30-minute segment. Because we usually do our lives for like three hours. So maybe we could do like a 30-minute segment yeah, of you know the Discord I, or something. Yeah, you know how I put on the screen that article about Amazon doing <clears throat> palm scanners? I guess, uh, you know, at the last 30 minutes of the uh, live, I could just put on the screen, half of the screen, the Discord, and we can read off the Discord and see what you guys are talking about. Yeah, maybe yeah. you guys would like that. We spend can, like 30 minutes, even can, in the beginning or the end of the chat or whatever. Yeah, we can do it at the end. And, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do that next week. So <laughs> I guess whatever's in there, we're going to read it all off at the end of the 30 minutes of the live. But anyways, I appreciate you guys. Um, it's always fun. I always enjoy it. Hopefully you guys have a good week. Hopefully the episode is entertaining for you guys. And we look forward to talking to you guys again next week. So hit up that Discord, throw in those things, and we will discuss it ne next week. But anyways, until next time, we appreciate your conversation and your community. You guys always give us good brain. So we're signing out here at Toilet Time. Sweet dreams. TV. <laughs> <laughs>